टेक्नोलॉजी से बने वर्ल्ड क्लास टाइल्स टाइल हो तो सिंपल हो In this election, is it the young? Is it the women? Yeah, the women, all people, people of this uh, constituency are all star campaigners. Uh, so, uh, when you meet these people, like you meet those women over there, uh, what is it that you see? They say they are all happy. You can see the mood. The people over here, there are some women who are very happy. Are you ready? Happy or not? Happy, happy. Election is a big spectacle. It's a lot of noise. And right now, Annie Rajas is taking out a campaign in the in uh, Meenangadi market. As you can see, she is addressing the people. So I'm just going to get a little candid, little candid with her. Uh, uh, you have been you have been in politics for 45 years. You have been in politics for 45 years. What does it take to become a politician? Now you see the injustice, the inequality. the discrimination because of caste because of gender because of uh, the economic situation that you know um 45 years ago issues were different today is a different set of issues uh, so uh, when you meet these people like you meet those women over there uh, what is it that you see they say they are all happy they are all happy that uh, Someone who they can communicate, and someone they can convey their will and wish. Someone who they can share their sorrows. So you can see that how happy they are. So that is. Yeah. Yeah. Over here, who's come to meet you? Interesting. डीएम के और कांग्रेस टू साइड्स ऑफ द सेम क्वाइन है नरेंद्र मोदी भाइयों और बहनों सिर्फ मुखौटा है छप्पन इंच की छाती नहीं है जो भ्रष्टाचार करेगा वो जेल की सलाखों के पीछे चला जाएगा हिंदू धर्म में शक्ति शब्द होता है हम शक्ति से लड़ रहे हैं माताओं बहनों की रक्षा के लिए जान की बाजी लगा आपको लगता होगा इतना सारा काम मोदी कर रहा है घर घर कुछ न कुछ पहुंच रहा है तो ये मोदी थकता क्यों नहीं है ये मोदी रुकता क्यों नहीं है अरे कोई और होता तो मौज करता मोदी मौज करने के लिए पैदा नहीं हुआ है मोदी मेहनत करने के लिए पैदा हुआ है कांग्रेस भारत को अस्थिरता की तरफ ले जाना चाहती अराजकता में झोंकना चाहती कर्नाटका में कांग्रेस के एक बड़े नेता ने दक्षिण भारत को देश से अलग करने की बात कही दो टुकड़े करने की बात कही आप मुझे बताइए देश के टुकड़े करने की बात करने वालों को सजा मिलनी चाहिए कि नहीं मिलनी चाहिए भारत माता की भारत माता की ये पहला ऐसा चुनाव है जिसमें सारे भ्रष्टाचारी मिलकर भ्रष्टाचार पर कार्रवाई रोकने के लिए रैली कर रहे हैं अरे 
मोदी का कोई परिवार नहीं है उसको भ्रष्टाचार की जरूरत नहीं है तो क्या परिवार है तो आपको भ्रष्टाचार करने का लाइसेंस मिल जाता है क्या वो कुछ भी कहे मेरे लिए तो आप ही मेरा परिवार है मेरा भारत मेरा परिवार है देश के सारे भ्रष्टाचारी जो हमेशा एक दूसरे से लड़ते थे एक दूसरे पर भ्रष्टाचार के आरोप लगाते थे एक दूसरे को जेल में बंद करने की मांग कर रहे थे वो सब मिलकर मोदी आया From the Delhi studios of Republic TV, it's time for Arnab Goswami on the debate. Swami on the debate at 9 presented by Amity University powered by RP Sanjeev Goenka Policy Bazaar co-powered by Belkol You was I I disagree with the idea of introducing caste and religious identity as a quasi reservation in the higher judiciary of india judges should not be appointed on the basis of whether they are from the minority community or not or whether they are from this caste or that caste that is not the way you appoint judges but this is only one of the many reasons i disagree with the vadra congress manifesto today i also disagree with the idea of introducing some random apprenticeship for young people in india apprenticeship that also 8000 rupees a month mr chidambaram and rahul gandhi for well qualified highly qualified indians 8000 rupees a month be happy that's the congress idea an apprenticeship is not a job and indians need jobs not internships and apprenticeships and mr p chidambaram must know that 8000 rupees a month is not enough to live on it is less than the minimum wage indians need jobs rahul gandhi jobs not apprenticeships foreign investment infrastructure development growth economic growth viksit bharat this creates jobs and you want to take us back 30 years and throw okay you be happy with 8000 rupees a month this is an apprenticeship be happy this is a congress party gift you what rubbish i also disagree with this idea of moving more items from the concurrent list over which both the center and state have some jurisdiction entirely to the state list which is another manifesto promise of the congress party what is this india needs to be unified and strong and the congress party is saying reduce the powers of the central government reduce the powers of the central government give it away to the states give it away to the states why because you are not in power at the center if the powers of the center are reduced and the powers of the state are increased we wonder why you are doing it because are you doing it in the name of federalism or do you want to break up the country and since it comes from the party of rahul gandhi who goes around the whole world saying india is not a nation anyway it's some kind of a negotiation i find his intentions completely ominous and suspicious you should too 
not that everything in the Congress party Vadra Congress manifesto is bad but it's it's too predictable it's too hackneyed it sounds like the manifesto of another era it's not a 2024 manifesto for sure that's my take we're debating this tonight the hackneyed Congress party manifesto debate one this evening Debate two, ladies and gentlemen. You have the Guardian newspaper for whom the biggest source is the ISI. They've gone out of their mind, these left lip papers. Debate number three this evening, viewers. The left and the Congress are seeing red over the Kerala story. Why? Wasn't this cleared by the censor board? Debate three. And here are the headlines this Friday evening on the debate tonight. Big political controversy as the Congress party promises major shockers in its manifesto, BJP mocks it. The Guardian puts out report claiming India ordered killings of terrorists in Pakistan is the British media pushing the Pak narrative now. The Kerala story back in focus as the left and the Congress object to Doordarshan's move to broadcast the movie. I don't speak to the public. Robert Vadra ducks and dodges Republic specific questions from frame to frame to frame. Big development in the liquor gate investigation. The CBI gets permission to question K. Kavita. Sources say K. Jriwal could be next. Massive win for forces in Uri as the army foils the infiltration bid. One new terrorist neutralized search and cordon operation is underway. And we're just weeks away from the Lok Sabha elections. And today the Vadra Congress released its manifesto, which is a copy-paste, more or less a copy-paste version of the 2019 one. But this manifesto has many problems. For one, it says that caste and religion should be one of the factors in choosing India's highest judges. Do you agree with that? Is that what we want in 2024? Let's debate. The Congress has released its 48-page poll manifesto. A slew of promises, some repackaged, some that shock and some which mismatch. The Congress in its manifesto, mostly a rehashed one from 2019, has made regressive promises it calls progressive. From carrying out a pan-India caste census to bringing back personal laws, let us tell you what doesn't add up. The Congress has released its 48-page manifesto which it calls uh, the Nyai Patra and in, in the Nyai Patra it has guaranteed uh, a lot of schemes. You will find that the Congress has set a minimum wage of 400 rupees per day for a daily wage worker which translates to about 1,44,000 rupees a year. So this is an anomaly because who would apply for an apprenticeship if a daily wage worker is getting paid more than him? Now the judiciary. The Congress promises more women, OBCs and minorities to the High Courts and Supreme Court. The question is, why bring quota over merit system even in judiciary? Let's talk about federalism. Rahul's manifesto says, with consensus, transfer of fields from list 3 to list 2. Is this an attempt to weaken the powers of the central government? The list goes on and has invited a political blowback. In 2019, the Congress has made a lot of 
आदत रही है शरारत रही है उसी के अनुरूप उन्होंने एक बार फिर भ्रम पैदा करने के लिए ही इस प्रकार का मैनिफेस्टो दिया है जिसमें से एक भी चीज न उन्होंने केंद्र में रहते हुए कभी पूरी की न राज्य सरकारों में रहते हुए पूरी की इज दिस मैनिफेस्टो दैट इंडिया विल एक्सेप्ट लेट्स डिबेट viewers let me make my position clear i am completely appalled at the congress party manifesto and i'll tell you why if you agree or disagree with with me i am appalled i'm aghast i'm shocked i'm horrified that this manifesto and i'll run an active poll if you want to say that you more of you disagree with me you can say so do you agree with me or disagree with me i am horrified at the congress manifesto on the debate this evening tohin sinha in the studios national spokesperson bjp along with macro economist author of asia reborn and chief economist at icici securities pk basu ishkaran singh bhandari well known lawyer and and uh, digital evangelist kapil madan backs the congress party abhishek sudhir generally is anti bjp and we have with us after a long time santosh mehrotra who's a visiting professor of economics at the university of bath in uk well known economist welcome back uh, mr mehrotra i'd like to begin with you uh, fundamentally the first point of disagreement i have with the congress party manifesto can you hear me mr mehrotra loud and clear sir loud and clear mr mehrotra my first point of disagreement with the manifesto loud and clear. thank you thank you sir we is with the idea of an apprenticeship now i know it's a well meaning idea saying that if you are an educated graduate indian whatever you don't have a job we'll give you an apprenticeship we'll throw 1 lakh rupees a year at you 1 lakh rupees a year roughly about 8000 rupees a month less than the minimum wage indians need jobs this is a halfway house in my my view it's not a promise of a job it's not the promise of employment or increased employment employment the congress party is saying we will increase the number of internships and apprenticeships and we'll work with the private sector to create them i don't think this helps mr merotra it's a halfway house don't you think sir the youth unemployment rate for 20 to 24 year olds currently is 44% this is not meant for the children of english speaking parents this is meant for the vast majority of our of our uh, young who are finishing a one year two year diploma everyone here is a graduate this is not meant for post graduates this is meant for those who have a one year certificate a two year diploma or three year degree and they will have a pathway to work Mo- the vast majority in this country do not get a job for more than 5 to 6000 per month i work on this data so i'm afraid i'm aware of this a little bit more this is not for your english speaking children this is for the vast majority and this will provide a guarantee which is already there in the 1961 act but has not been implemented by governments and therefore yes sir of course mr mr basu you will have your chance so let the others speak i am not a, i am not in, intending to speak when you are about to speak okay in a in a country where there is 44% unemployment you are unlikely for 20 to 24 year olds they they and in a country which is not generating jobs so you may they need jobs yes but they are the government is policies have not generated jobs we have had the highest unemployment rate prior to covid in 2017 18 of 18% youth unemployment which has actually only gone on increasing with all due respect so you, you probably don't know this but 62% of those who are in the workforce today actually earn less than 200 rupees a day that's the wage rate in this country this is what the plfs the periodic labor force survey data is telling you so if you are not aware of the facts there is nothing do i can do to help you now obviously the english speaking air conditioned lifestyle walas will not understand this that's the problem 
Okay, I'll get PK to respond with a with a two line input from my side. Uh, with with respect, Mr. Merotra, I take offence to your uh, assumption that people who don't speak English should learn should earn less than people who speak English. India has changed, <laughs> Dr. Merotra. That's, re that's India's that's reality, not or no? A fair assessment. That's, a, that's India's reality. It, it may be, but the second it's, it's not the reality anymore. It may have been the reality in the Dun school days. Now, the daily minimum wage in India is 5,340 or it can also be seen as 400 rupees a day to say we'll give less than that. Is I don't think it would be attractive to young no, Indians, but I leave it to Dr. Basu to respond to you. Uh, Arnab, your reporter completely misunderstood. Manrega is available only for 100 days. So no one, in there, no one is even allowed to earn 1.44 lakh in a year on 400 rupees a day. It's not even yes. humanly possible because the law doesn't permit it. <laughs> I'll, let P I'll get PK Basu respond to you. I think India is very aspirational and therefore I believe okay. 1 lakh rupees a year will not be attractive or acceptable to most. Uh, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Basu. So I, you know, I think uh, Professor Mehrotra is living in an India that is uh, long past. Uh, oh, really? So 1 lakh rupees a year uh, domestic servants, even in Kolkata, earn more than that. So, uh, I don't think that you know, an aspirational Indian will be looking for a one lakh rupees a year job as an apprentice, apprentice. or as, as an intern. Uh, now, with regard to your data on so-called youth unemployment, uh, this is based on CMIE. Nobody with any sense, ha no, there is no credibility with the CMIE data. CMIE uses a <laughs> Uh, and their survey methods are extremely weak. Uh, oh, really? and it, you know, they don't even have a proper measure of the labor force. How can they measure oh, really? unemployment? So oh, really? uh, PLFS and other surveys have proper estimates of the unemployment rate, which is around 6 to 7%, which is much more credible for the fastest growing economy in the, the world. On the apprenticeship point. Please. Now, you see, the point about the Indian labor market is that the vast majority of Indians uh, work in what are, what are called own enter owned enterprises, the enterprises that they, that they run themselves. So most of India is, in fact, entrepreneurial. Now, uh, <laughs> among those who have jobs, now if you, if you just, just look at the, at the structure of the labor market, the structure of the labor market has changed substantially from what Professor Merotra remembers from his youth. Uh, and at, at the moment, a lack of rupees is not anything that, you know, a lack of rupees in a full year, not the, the sort of wage that would, uh, that would attract any aspirational end. Okay, so, we've, got, we've got two sides. I can see strong disagreements here. I, I wish to bring in Tuhin and Kapil Madan on the apprenticeship issue. Uh, there are two ways. What I heard Dr. Merotra begin by saying is that since unemployment is a real issue, and I don't deny that it is, something is better than nothing, to which my point was that this isn't even something, to which a third point can be Kapil, you, I want you in the debate and then Tuhin, that this could be a very, very convenient scheme to churn a lot of cheap labor in the country. Therefore, in the name of an ex apprenticeship, this could be seen to be an extremely exploitative situation. And since you say all diploma holders and graduates would avail of an apprenticeship, it could end up reducing the entry level salary for most jobs. I mean, why would people give anyone 25 or 30,000 rupees a month when you can get an apprentice at 8,000 rupees a month? Hence, bringing down the benchmark and creating a lot of cheap labor in the country, which may not be in the interest of the social indicators for the country or the economic indicators of most people. Uh, Kapil. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Yes, Anam, I think you've got it. Completely can you unmute wrong. yourself? I can, tell you, I can tell you from the legal industry also and you know people from the media that I know that when people hire mostly uh, uh, interns in the legal industry, they are not paid. They have to, you know, fend for themselves. Okay. And that's that's a reality in the country. The same thing happens in the media also when, you know, uh, the kids 
who are studying or who have just you know uh, uh, came out they want to have an experience if an intern is uh, which we in legal uh, industry we call interns and somewhere it is called apprenticeship they are not paid there is no system that regulates what would be their term of employment it is a void which is there in your industry also and i can tell you it is there in the legal industry also and no, to read and and to read and say, okay can you then say every person in the media who comes you know for an internship is he paid or is he not paid you please answer this you please answer this and i will open up opinion poll on this okay, whether you want, media i can i can speak for or not I so can i can i can you, you, i you can say yes or no can, then i will run i can a poll. speak i, I can speak for poll. I will run my own. Yeah, but I'll speak. Can you stop media? raising your decibel? No, I'm responding to you. I'm trying to make. I'm no, responding it's an to you. Important issue. It's I I don't issue. do these eight thousand rupee internship so, a, a, apprenticeships. So, so, it's so, exploited. Okay, yes, that's the problem because reply. people people yeah. don't pay at all. People don't pay at but all. But you want to implement it on a national level. You no, want to implement it across what, sectors, what across jobs, logic? across industries. You want to make all young people apprenticeships. A, let me ask no. you. Let me ask no, you. Would a member of the Vadra Gandhi family accept a eight thousand rupee internship? Would a member of the Chidambaram family accept a eight thousand rupee internship? Why does that question hurt? Would they? And to which Mr. Merotra will say, "No, no, you're English speaking. You can't accept it." But non-English speaking should accept. I think the only, Anup, the only escape and the drift you have is, you know, to give an illogical, you know, situation and bring any random person in the debate. We are debating a single issue. You can say yes or no. Whether in media, whether in media industry specifically, do you know that? there are interns who Alex, work Alex, and who Alex, don't Alex. get paid i come from legal industry and i can say with confidence i can say i run one media organization i don't run so all you, if others no, are doing you, it i don't agree no, with it no, end of now, story no. Now the point and Congress is, wants no, to implement no, it nationally. No, I disagree I with you also. I am you looking on a back foot because you don't want to answer this question because you know for a fact that in media industry also. No, I've never in my life been on a back foot. I'm very straight. No, you are on a back foot. I'm telling you, 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 you are creating, you are creating, you are creating bucketfuls of cheap labor in the country, and I don't think it will work. Shall we? You take a okay tomorrow morning. I want any Congress leader to go to any part of the country and tell young Indians, we will make you work. We will make you work a full. Day, doing a full goals. week, a full a, month, and a full a, year, and pay one lakh always. rupees. Anup, you have great. You try and say that to anyone. Right now. They'll tell you which Let's world are you living right in. Now. You just open and you run a poll. Okay, we do a live poll right now. I accept the challenge. Okay, ask, okay, live poll. Okay. Okay. poll. Now don't speak. No, ask, live poll. Yes, question on ask, the screen. Ask, Congress, Congress, Congress offer of eight thousand rupee apprenticeship. Fair or unfair? That's right. Congress offer of eight thousand rupee apprenticeship for qualified Indians. Fair or unfair? Fair or unfair? Will Indians, will qualified Indians accept eight thousand rupee apprenticeship? Yes or no? Do it is on the debate. Do it. The manifesto debate. Arnab, the Congress party very clearly. On the debate. On the debate. Arnab, very clearly, the Congress party has a regressive economic policy. Now, 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 the congress party is regressive i don't need to reiterate this but if i may just expand you know because i was shocked with a num with many many things in 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 this manifesto you know basically it's a mischievous manifesto with a clear twofold agenda one is to unleash financial anarchy in the country and the two is to foment and foster caste divides across the, the society and i can expand each of the, these points to you you know when it comes to financial f- fiscal profligacy i mean they are promising 1 lakh Per poor woman in this country, this added with their other unrealistic promise of legal guarantee for MSP would amount to an expenditure of 15 lakh crore per year, which would roughly mean one third of the budget expenditure. When they make such promises, they, it is incumbent upon them to explain where would they get the funds for. for look at the number of times they have reiterated the freedom of choice for. personal laws when they mention this they need to specify are they going to revoke the triple talaq act they need to specify are they going to encourage polygamy you move from number point three. to point you move from point to point you 
you say you disagree with the MSP. بیجے which started in 2014 with a 55 lakh crore total debt is now at 2 lakh 200 lakh crore in terms of gdp it started at around 58% of gdp sir uh, in terms of our debt to gdp ratio sir i was in way better than us US, US, japan and many other countries so as an economist you know you should know that more than more than the debt is, it is the debt to gdp ratio which matters okay, calm down him I was not speaking when you were speaking have the decency to listen to me I could not even complete my second sentence so you a government which started at 58% of gdp is now standing at 81% of gdp in terms of debt is a, it's a bit rich for a spokesperson from that party to be telling the congress In any case, where is this fifteen thousand crore number coming from? PK What is this fifteen thousand crore? PK where did he find it in PK. the manifesto? <laughs> okay, let me just quickly respond on, you know, with regard to the fiscal profligacy. Uh, let's just understand that first of all, inflation during the uh, during the last five years of UPA. was 10% a year every single year and there were twin deficits the current account deficit reached 5% of gdp in fy 20 2013 the fiscal deficit was running at close to 6% of gdp at a time when the world economy was booming now those are twin deficits and by comparison right now the the current account deficit is less than 1% of gdp the fiscal deficit is on a path towards 4.5% of gdp that is what fiscal responsibility is about and it's a vast difference now if you just look at the period even under the the narasimha rao government inflation was extremely high the banking system was bust so the congress has a record of uh, of destroying the banking system they did it twice uh, in 90, 94 95 there was already uh, a, a serious banking crisis when they left government in 2014 there was the worst uh, crisis in our in our financial system what is called the twin balance sheet crisis banks were bust uh, the the private sector uh, was unable to borrow because they their balance sheets were a, a complete mess So uh, it's rich, I think, for uh, somebody supporting the Congress to get away from this reality. This is the reality. Now, if you just also just concentrate a bit on what has happened in Karnataka or, yeah. or Himachal Pradesh, uh, Karnataka uh, I, began to run out of money I, within six months of of the government coming in uh, because they had a whole slew of uh, of freebies. that they could not fund okay so we have two so, perspectives so we I, have I, this. I, got, i got i got your view people are voting i'll put the vote out i put the poll out ladies and gentlemen one point i want to mention before i move on and this will be interesting abhishek and ishkaran as we get in the word minorities is used 13 times in the congress manifesto whereas there is not a single mention of the word majority or the word hindu 
but minorities is referred to 13 times i'm not passing judgment it's their choice they want to keep referring to minorities the word majority is mentioned once but in the context of the word majoritarianism so majority is bad majority people are majoritarian similarly the word majority is used in the terms brute majority of the bjp in parliament quote majoritarianism has taken over and quote no place for majoritarianism i'm not saying they're anti-hindu but it is interesting viewers this is the way the congress chooses it my problem specifically ishkaran and this is the burning issue of the day they say that when choosing judges to the high court and supreme court you must look at whether they are from minority or not from minority whether they are from this caste or that caste I say this is the limit. Shameful. This yes. is the limit. Arna? You yes. will now say, are you a Muslim? Are you not a Muslim? Not if limit. you are a Muslim, I'll give you preference to the Supreme Court. The what is going on here? What does the Congress party Arna? want? Yeah. Who is influencing them? Which party and of the, which of their allies? Left? IUML who? Yes, please. Ishkaran on this hot Arna? part of the debate. Ishkaran. Yes. yes. Arnab, why are you surprised when the sitting Prime Minister of India said minorities and Muslims specifically he was talking about have the first right on resources of this nation? Why are you surprised? A party which wanted to bring communal violence bill. I shudder as a lawyer to think what would have happened if that bill would have come into place. Every person belonging to majority community would have been presumed guilty for any riot which happened in this country, any crime which happened in this country between two different religions, the majority community would have been by default the guilty party. That was the mindset. And why are you surprised by that? They are masters in dog whistle. Do you remember how secularism was inserted in the constitution? A very decent sounding word, but which had been rejected wrong, because wrong. our nation has always been secular. When you deliberately insert that view or that word, it is to target a specific vote bank. When you do not want to contest an amethi and you believe your vote bank lies in why not, of course your laws, your manifestos will reflect on that. When you talk about their talking points, the code words are not only minority, personal law, personal law, when they know a triple hey, talaq debate sense. has happened, where this government has given the basic right to a woman that you will not hear talaq, talaq, talaq and be thrown on the road, where this Supreme Court gave basic right of maintenance bad. to Shabano, they came and they overturned that Shabano law, so a Muslim woman should not deserve a basic maintenance. They are the people who are quoted Article 370. They talk about reservation. You read about what was happening in really Article 370 to SC, ST and women, but they will not talk about it. Yours, so the view is very clear. All the times they read views Yours, this is minority is many, or secular, no, no, it is a direct target to a particular. One second. This it, is every not time the word minority is I'm, used, I'm sure it's a code word to I'm, say what laws we will frame when we come into a power and those laws appears as if but the drafting every, was done is too by much. Tomorrow, Muslim personal but, but Ishkaran, it is all but, but Ishkaran, tomorrow you will say, tomorrow, tomorrow you will say, to, no, no, tomorrow the Congress party will also say that when you are deciding who is going to be the General Officer Commander in Chief of the Eastern Command or the Eastern Air Command, which Air Marshal or which General will take over, they will say we should see whether they are from this caste or whether they are Muslim or not. This is, I mean, the limit of wokeness. It's, it's <coughs> political stupidity, it's political harakari and viewers, I am not making it up. I it's read point number enough. five. More women it's and persons wokeness. from SC, ST, OBC and the minority community and the minority community will now be appointed as judges in high courts and Supreme Court. I know that Justice Chandrachur cannot speak because he's in an office, but I'm sure he will be totally appalled at these kind of suggestions. Reservations tomorrow, they'll say Chief Justice of India on the basis of Can which religion you are from. Which is an assumption that if you're not from a minority you community, in? you will be unfair. It will be a disincentive for people who are not from the minority community or from SCST community to even enter the judicial services because they will say we never have a right. Waha pe bhi reservation ho jayega. Kal army mein hoga. Air force mein hoga. Paramilitary mein hoga. CRP. Everywhere it's going to be only reservations.
This is craziness. Ten seconds. Are no, I, 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 do you want to add a point to this because Abhishek has uh, no, not spoken. Uh, when it, it is, they, they are equally this mischievous when it comes to Manipur. They have used no, no, the I word. No, no, Manipur. Yeah. This one is sure. too big. You know. sure. This one is big. Do you agree with me, viewers? I, I disagree with this idea. Abhishek. Yeah, but Mr. Goswami, I'm speaking last. I want to make a nuance point. Representation. Representation is important. You have Justice Gawai, who is in line to become Chief Justice of India in 2025. Justice Gawai was speaking at a conference in the United States last week. And he said that I was elevated two years before I should actually have been elevated to the Supreme Court. But I was elevated <coughs> because it was felt that Dalit representation is important. Justice Gawai is a Dalit. And Justice Gawai in 2025 will become just the second Dalit Chief Justice in the 75-year illustrious history of the Supreme Court after K.G. Balakrishnan became Chief Justice in 2009. Now you have Justice Nagaratna, who in 2027 will become the first female Chief Justice of India. 77 years we would have had to wait to get a member from 50% of the population to become the Chief Justice. Representation is important, Mr. Goswami. Chief Justice Chandrachud's father was Chief Justice. Justice Kanna's uncle HR Kanna was the famous judge who went against Indira Gandhi during the emergency. Justice Gawai's father was an associate of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Representation is important because when a Dalit or a woman or a member from this the minority so wrong, community, so we had great Muslim Chief so, Justice. So Chief grossly Justice unfair, we've had Chief so Justice. Prejudiced, please allow so me to speak, so vexatious, sir. Can you so please allow me to speak? Can you please you allow something. me to finish uh, my Abhishek. point? Abhishek, okay, I'll, I'll come in with a point here tonight. I'll come, I will uh, completely allow you to finish no, your point, but since I have a point to make to you. No, you was, please allow me please, to speak and give me please, 30 seconds. Please, un yeah, because you may I've not be interested in listening, minutes. that's your you choice. Wasted my time. But I am I interested in speaking, in so I will I will uh, force you right now no, to listen to me. No, please give me 35 Abhishek, you give me another 30 seconds. The second. law is blind to race. I have listened patiently the to everybody. The law is blind to race, to religion, to caste, to creed, to gender. Those who are deciding on matters of what is just or unjust should not be seen on the basis of their caste or religion. Representation for a judge makes no voice. sense. You know, that's the the entire point you just that don't he want is to let your only speak. and only a man or woman protecting justness. No, you have to, if you cannot contradict my point, then you, I, it's, it's, it, can I, you give I me 30 you, seconds to finish my point? It, but Abhishek, you can't I didn't even make this my is a very point. serious matter. My point People is are with me, this. not you. When a Chief Justice yeah, is a Dalit point will or be a made Muslim after about three or comes from a community that has not had representation in the judiciary. They bring their lived experience to the bench. They bring their lived experience to the bench. That is important yeah. because those who come before the law, those who suffer the okay. consequences of the law are often marginalized. So it is important to have people from those very same marginalized communities okay. dispensing justice. Right? Justice is not dispensed in a vacuum. How much, Human how, beings what percentage would you like? Their caste, okay, their what creed, percent, their religion, okay, what, their lived what, experience what percentage? has a bearing on their decisions. Thank Whether you, I like understood your hackneyed not. lived experience I'm argument. Done. My point is, my point is, my question is, Ishkaran, what would you like? Would you want, how much percentage should be kept for Muslims, panelists, for example, yeah. among uh, higher judiciary? How, what percentage, Ishkaran, of Supreme Court judges must be Muslim? Uh, no. First, you can't just say we, we would like more Muslims. Tell me how much? 5%, 2%, 25% and or 80%? I think the Congress manifesto does not even understand the system of appointment of judges in this nation. It is through the collegium system. The judges are appointing judges themselves. They are cognizant of the ground reality. They know it is the collegium system which has led to Justice Gawai also becoming the Chief Justice of India. So firstly, the Congress needs to be clear what is the system of appointment in this country. The judges to say that there is not adequate representation to any segment, you are casting aspersions on the appointment system, which is led by the collegium. That is the law of the land. I do not know who writes all this. There are adequate lawyers in Congress. The government is not appointing anybody. The collegium system, Justice Nagaratan is going to become the first chief justice as There's the example was given. Point, Very good. There should be more women judges. There should be every no, representation. No, their Congress but is the planning some is funny things. It's not the government. No, I'll tell you some things, some things which are being planned. And I, I went through this and I said before my show tonight, I said to everyone, there are some things they're trying to do by stealth and they say, no, you're seeing a conspiracy where none exists. And I said, no, no, I'm absolutely sure. For example, point number eight, they are saying we will encourage reform of personal laws. But, but such reform must be undertaken only with the participation and the consent of the communities concerned. Meaning the All India Muslim Personal Law Board does not allow triple talaq to be abolished 
So maybe they are talking about the restoration of triple talaq. Yes, absolutely. That's a way of saying, bring us back, we'll absolutely. bring back triple talaq. Now, what, do you, the, what, do you, what do you think? I think the important Triple point is coming back according. Point, but also they need to specify to what extent they will support the Sharia tomorrow. Because like, you know, this con Congress yes. party, like you mentioned, the only time they have mentioned the majority community is in the context of major majoritarianism. No, the triple talaq point, I want them to clarify. When they are saying restoration, revival, bringing back in consultation. It's very obvious, the, what do What is the Congress party stand on triple talaq? So, will they bring no, the UCC? The Congress party will the BJP bring the, the UCC? Era, where the, the Prime Minister appointed all the judges. I mean, you know, what is the idea of, of, the, of a party saying how judges should be appointed? Judges are appointed by a collegium, not by, not by a political party. So why is the party talking about this? It's absurd. Oh, it, really? A, a judges from, are appointed by a collegium. Uh, uh, the government of India a, has routinely a, stalled the appointment of judges who don't agree Please, with the ruling government. party. That's one. Second thing is that you talked about M.H. Bhaig being, being a great chief justice. was stalled. M.H. Bhaig because he does not agree became chief justice primarily because he had voted with Indira Gandhi. He had voted with Indira Gandhi. That was the era when... Uh, when judges were Listen, appointed, sir, I think you should stick to economics. How loyal they were seen to the Congress. Economics. HR Khanna the all, system was system the only one who has was recommended not. names and repeatedly, repeatedly the government has rejected those no, 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 I, The government I, the has refused the, to issue the, a presidential the, the, warrant. The frightfully, the government has refused to issue a presidential warrant the, for the appointment the, of those judges. The frightfully pedestrian Gopal appointment was Abhishek, Abhishek. Several high court judges have been very, you are very, you are very shallow and pedestrian argument. Was recommended for elevation to the Karnataka High Court. His let appointment me, was stalled me, by the BJP. Yeah, he's ra he's ratified a few things. Enough. He's got to say it. You know, he's like this so student. He's, 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 he's like a student who's memorized some tutes. Yeah, he's got I'm to not interested in you your insults. Understand. You come up you're, with you know, half insults, insults are getting old. argument. Your insults now, now, are getting whatever you may be interested. Now, you need yeah, to. Okay. People need to watch me hitting yeah, yeah. you nice and hard. Yeah, the, yeah. If the question is, if the judges come with no empathy of lived experience, then they cannot deliver justice. Uh, uh, Kapil, Kapil, please tell him. Kapil, Don't Kapil, please tell him. Kapil, Kapil, please tell him who decided the Shabano case. It was a bench with Justice Chandrachur, yes. Ranganath Mishra, D.A. Desai, yes. Chinappa Reddy, and E.S. Venkat Ramaya. And this bench. man comes and says, if you don't have a lived experience, then, then you. Yeah, that means a silly and stupid argument. I really oppose this reservation on the name of religion and these castes in higher judiciary. Now, now you wanted to talk. Now, now you wanted to talk Kapil. about. Yes, now you want to talk about constitution. It is the same government when you know the Supreme Court you know passed a judgment wherein we, the Supreme Court pronounced that you know one of the member from the judiciary will be there uh, for the appointment of election commissioner. What did the government do? They came up with a law and they basically overcame that judgment when the Delhi. And versus the state uh, dispute, the judgment came. Again, a bill was you know, passed, uh, 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 introduced. You know, those, you know, basically that was also done to overcome the judgment passed by the Honorable Supreme Court. And, you know, day in and day out, you get judgments from the Supreme Court where the court come heavily on the government and say that the acts of the government are unconstitutional. We saw... In the electoral bonds case, we also saw when, you know, the government in Maharashtra, how uh, how the sitting uh, governor exercises power illegally, which the Honorable Supreme Court has said. So this is this is the government who should be last okay, in the who to should talk about Constitution of India. Arnab, the simple point is... Iskaran wants to you, two, Iskaran briefly, two, and then two, I have an important yeah, Arnab, point. Two, and have two small points. Firstly, whether a certain power belongs to Delhi government or union does not affect the basic right of women, which was the maintenance right given by the Supreme Court and taken away by the Congress government. Whether the woman should have a right of triple talaq and be thrown on the street in modern India or she should have some legal protection, that is the right given by the government. And I am very sure Kapil is an excellent lawyer. He knows how judges are appointed in this country. If there is any imbalance or there is any need of any greater representation, the collegium is sufficient to do it. Because if the government starts appointing, then immediately you will have the question no. of independence of judiciary, governmental interference in appointments and judiciary, and a whole I different... Have a, I have a very important point, so, so I need at least five minutes to deal with it. For. 
I need allow at least five only, minutes to deal with to it. I need five minutes to deal with it. I want allow me one minute, couple, couple, one minute. I need five minutes on my last point. I need five minutes on my last point, couple. Thirty, thirty seconds. I just want to respond to Ishkaran. I think Ishkaran is a very seasoned lawyer. He goes only to the constitutional court. There are other judicial, you know, uh, courts which are not the constitutional court, like lower judiciary, for which the appointments happen by giving <laughs> examination. And in Let those examination, you have, you know, you still have the system of, you know, uh, uh, reservation. Few seats are reserved exactly. for you know, categories. So yes, Ishkaran is right when he says that oh, the, the Congress manifesto is talking of High Court judges, and Supreme that Court is judges, only for the high not court entry and the level court. to the judicial not services. The <laughs> anyway, now, 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 you have got your thirty seconds. Now let me move to my main point. The main point. The main point. No, no, don't continue. The main point. This is a very important point. I have always believed. I have always believed, and today I have no doubt. I believe there is an agenda why the Congress Party says that India is not a nation. We've heard them say this not once, not twice. We've seen this repeated assertion by this party, and then when I call them anti-national, they say, "How dare you!" But their supreme leader and all their leaders, you know, PK, you had the unfortunate experience of meeting him in once in Singapore, and he says India is not a nation; it's some kind of a negotiation between states, some, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Now, in their manifesto, they say, "We will review." the distribution of legislative fields in the seventh schedule of the constitution and we will build a consensus on transferring many or some of these fields from the list 2 which is the concurrent list to list 2 list 3 the concurrent list to the state list now my point is why do you want to have an exercise of consensus when you've already decided that you will weaken the concurrent list reduce the powers of the central government And manifold increase the powers of the state government. Even Santosh Mehrotra, though he would want to support the Congress in this, let me ask him, so I, Mr. Mehrotra, do I, I, we I, want to transfer subjects like bankruptcy, in, insolvency, and major aspects of criminal law entirely to the state list? I do we realize the, the consequences of this? Criminal law Excuse is the state and police. Excuse me, Arnab. Excuse me. You asked me a question. May I answer? Hey, police, so the police is already in the state list. I think your research is not. Okay. Let 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 oh, no, let 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 Mr. Doctor let, let Doctor Merotra have a go first, please. Yeah. So it's very straightforward. I don't think the manifesto says which parts will be transferred from the concurrent to the state list. I think the larger point is much more important, which all your viewers need to understand. This country needed 75 years ago to have a very centralized constitution and a centralized system of governance. Oh, we it would interest you to know yeah, yeah. that that it it would interest you to know that while we are the democracy, we are the federation, and China is has a unitary constitution and they have a one-party state, they are much more fiscally decentralized than we are. there's something wrong there and all the literature about chinese economic growth is actually tracing its economic growth back to its fiscal decentralization we are a large country we are a much more diverse country we have no choice but to actually put in place a much deeper fiscal decentralization and therefore that's the spirit that is inherent you're contradicting in yourself fund. You've just that contradicted yourself, uh, Doctor Meru. May, 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 may I, may I, may I, may I come in and ask you a counter? Just, One minute. Please, no, but you contradicted please, yourself, sir. and let me explain why. Have you have begun your point I by saying. Point. Uh, I have allow not. me. <laughs> I, allow. I, 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 I'm, I'm absolutely sure, and the viewers are sure you have. But let me tell you why. Because in the heat Go of ahead. the moment, you began by saying, "How do you know, Arnab, which items of list three concurrent list will be taken?" You followed it up by saying that fiscal. redistribution is what is required if it is fiscal and not criminal procedure not preventive detention not marriage and divorce not actionable wrongs and if it is things like bankruptcy insolvency trust trustees if it is things like uh, economic and social planning trade unions labor disputes social security these are the fiscal matters so you already said it that we want to change take the fiscal matters away and I, my argument is if in this great country of ours dr merotra you take away and reduce 
the fiscal control of the center, you are basically making a terrible argument for a weak center. And I do oh, not, not see, all, I do not oh, see not this all, argument sir. in a conceivable oh, argument all, for any yes, person sir, watching my program be, tonight. Be, yes, sir. Let, let, no, let, 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 let It's not gospel truth because Arnab Goswami has said it. The fact of the matter is there is a vast body of literature in the whole world which has demonstrated that as, as countries become richer, they become more fiscally decentralized. So let's rest assured. Well, I say, I don't country, care what I literature exists. I you say, I say, smart. Dr. Merotra, we need, need to be no, a no, no, stronger no. nation, not a weaker no, nation, no, no, not no, a nation no, no, as you no, would no, like no, it no, to no, be. No, What's no, it? Pinke Basu wants to have a go at you on this one. Pinke Basu. Oh, please don't teach me. Don't teach me. That's why I don't like coming on your show. No, no, no. There's a very important. The, the there you go. The problem the, is you uh, have this unilateral of, approach, Dr. Uh, no, Merotra. Uh, no, whether you like to come on my show or not, you know, history will record since, the fact you know, that my arguments tonight through. have left you completely incapable of or responding. Or not, or not, the answer is on the other side. Yes, there please. There is good riddance from him. Just one second. There are two before the show ends. There are two very mischievous points which you have left out. Oh, this which concurrent let me enlighten. List one is a big one. Let me, you know, when it comes to decentralization, it needs to be seen in a larger perspective. And therefore, before the show ends, I want to tell you, you know, I want to remind the viewers also, look at what they have written in the context of Manipur. They are emphasizing administrative settlement without ev you know, ever mentioning territorial integrity of Manipur. Does that mean they are supporting cookie land? Okay, one minute. You know, these yeah. are issues yeah. where Congress needs to... On the concurrent list issue which no, no, Dr. No, Merotra no. walked out on. So I think it's important to understand that... Unfortunate, throughout, unfortunate. Throughout, throughout the tolerance. time that Congress was in power, they were centralizing power. They were centralizing India on a fiscal basis. Uh, right through the time. Now, talk about China. The interesting thing is that Close China it. is quick. You know, has a, a degree of fiscal decentralization, but uh, their their uh, the GST, the value added tax, is completely central. And as we can see, China is a completely centrally controlled the, the point, state the point throughout being tonight, history. See, we have what, what, years we, of what, what we've done is we've gone, we've like gone we've gone we've gone a little bit it has too deep, perhaps. We upset so the, people, the but, I tax, you, but I tell you, but I tell you, PK, 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 I'm sorry to cut you short, but I'll say this tonight. When you go deep, when you sift below the surface and you see the intentions, you have the kind of debate we've had tonight. We've had a great response and I stand by every word I said. We need a stronger center, not a weaker center. These are dangerous things. They should not be tolerated. I'll see you on the other side, viewers on debate two and three on what is proving to be quite a hot show this evening. King sir, your dinner. On a tile? And it's antibacterial. Mm -hmm. Easy to clean. But plates? Clean by, it's a tile lad. <laughs> I am plus technology से बने world class tiles tile हो तो simple हो. Amity has been ranked India's number one private university for the 11th year by India Today, a testimony to Amity's world class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. Kane sir, your dinner. On a tile? अरे hey, it's antibacterial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scratch resistant also. The plates? Can buy. It's a tile lad. I am plus technology se bane. World class tiles. Tile ho to simple ho. Hindu dharm mein shakti shabd hota hai. Hum shakti se lad rahe hai. Ek shakti se lad rahe hai. India Alliance ne apna goshna patra. शक्ति को खत्म करने के लिए किया है मैं इस चुनौती को स्वीकार करता हूं और मैं इन शक्ति स्वरूप माताओं बहनों की रक्षा के लिए जान की बाजी लगा दूंगा किंग सर योर डिनर ऑन अ टाइल अरे इट्स एंटीबैक्टीरियल Scratch resistant also. The plates? Can buy. It's a tile lad. I am plus technology se bane. World class tiles. Tile ho to simple ho. Yo! 
over here who has come to meet you. Interesting. So, uh, who is your star campaigner in this election? Is it the young? Is it the women? Yeah, the women, all people. People of this uh, constituency are all star campaigners. Uh, so, uh, when you meet these people, like you meet those women over there, uh, what is it that you see? They, see? they are all happy. You can see the mood. The people over here, there are some women who are very happy. Are you ready? Happy or not? Happy, happy. Election is a big spectacle. It's a lot of noise. And right now, Annie Rajas is taking out a campaign in the... In, uh, Sir, your dinner. On a tile? Are it's antibacterial. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Scratch resistant also. But plates? Can buy. It's a tile lad. Uh, IM Plus Technology Simani. World class tiles. Tile ho the simple. Amity has been ranked India's number one private university for the 11th year by India Today. A testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. Kane sir, your dinner. On a tile? Are it's antibacterial. Mm-hmm. Easy to clean. For plates? Can buy. It's a tile lad. Uh, I am plus technology simani. World-class tiles. Tile ho the simple Rahul Gandhi's rally in Vayanad, post filing his nomination. A new row as Congress and its ally IUML over not using their flags during rally. A visually stark contrast from the flag strewn visuals of Bharat Joro Yatra. Congress already facing flag for its links with the radical organization. ये मानना है कि कल कांग्रेस पार्टी के नामांकन रैली में मुस्लिम लीग के फ्लैग्स को छुपाना इस बात का संकेत है कि या तो राहुल गांधी मुस्लिम लीग के समर्थन से शर्मसार हैं या फिर जब वो उत्तर भारत में आएंगे और मंदिर मंदिर जाएंगे तब लोगों से उत्तर भारत में मुस्लिम लीग के साथ उनके गठबंधन को छुपा पाएंगे With even anti allies slamming Congress for links to the terror-linked body. The question that arises is, why is it that the two parties are not waving their flags at this important poll event? कांग्रेस को जब से कर्नाटका में मौका मिला है तो इन्होंने कर्नाटका को अपना एटीएम बना दिया है लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन नाउ इट्स टाइम फॉर द नेशन शार्पेस्ट ओपिनियन 56 सिक्स ईयर ओल्ड रॉबर्ट डीएम के और कांग्रेस टू साइड्स ऑफ द सेम क्वाइन है नरेंद्र मोदी भाइयों और बहनों सिर्फ मुखौटा है छप्पन इंच की छाती नहीं है जो भ्रष्टाचार करेगा वो जेल की सलाखों के पीछे चला जाएगा हिंदू धर्म में शक्ति शब्द होता है हम शक्ति से लड़ रहे हैं माताओं बहनों की रक्षा के लिए जान की बाजी लगा
from the Delhi studios of Republic TV. It's time for the debate. Swami on the debate at 10, powered by Reva University, Policy Bazaar, Kuchina. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time now for the nation's sharpest opinion. A British newspaper called The Guardian seems to be scrambling for relevance. And in the bid to keep its 1821 era newspaper relevant in 2024, they seem to have banked on the accounts of the ISI. Single source journalism, ladies and gentlemen. This Western media propaganda laden today with the woke brigade, these has-beens who have gone unchallenged intellectually for decades need to be countered. This typical narrative building ahead of every general election in India is getting too predictable. But this time the Guardian has used an ISI script, ISI source, to say that the Indian government has ordered the killing of terrorists in Pakistan. How sympathetic they are to terrorists, they always have been. They've quoted Pakistani investigators without question or an ounce of journalistic corroboration, objectivity or proof. They call themselves journalists to be regurgitating the propaganda of the ISI, the same ISI whose hand was in 2611 killing 166 people in Mumbai. This is like the Guardian saying the Al-Qaeda has told us something. The same ISI who is linked by Mossad to have a hand in the killing of Jews and Israelis. The same ISI which is responsible for being the bridge and forging the lashkar e toiba the jaish e mohammed and the taliban alliance if terror operators their middlemen their advisors and super supervisors are now seen by papers like the guardian as credible sources then i think it's about time really that they are solidly countered and i have said this before and i will say it again the hegemony of this western media will be countered by the voice and power of a billion and the propaganda of those like The Guardian more than anything else in my view is the biggest glaring message that the time has come to do it and ladies and gentlemen my promise is that Republic will do it at a very large scale very very soon for tonight we counter Pakistan's narrative that they propagated through the woke brigade of the West it's time we smash that narrative and set the record straight so let's debate the Western media propaganda on India is back in focus once again and this time it's The Guardian. It's alleged a report claiming that Indian government ordered killings on Pakistani soil. The basis, they claim to have interviews with Pakistani investigators and documents they claim shared by the Pakistanis. A hit job at best. India has responded to the report as it should have, calling out the false and malicious propaganda. But this is not the first time an anti-India narrative is being peddled. From Trudeau's big Nijar killing allegation that triggered a massive India-Canada diplomatic row, but was not met with any substance. It's extremely important that as a country with a strong and independent justice system, we allow those justice processes to unfold themselves with the utmost integrity. But I can assure you, the decision to uh, share these allegations on the floor of the House of Commons Monday morning was not done lightly. Uh, it was done with, or Monday afternoon, was done with uh, the utmost seriousness. To the plot to kill Pannu claim, a charge that still awaits proof. Matt, I don't really have any uh, anything new to sort of offer on this that uh, both Matt and the Secretary haven't spoke to. Um, Already, I would say, in, in the number of, of times that has come up uh, before the press in, in the past week or so, I would just reiterate again, we are and continue to be deeply uh, concerned about the uh, allegations referenced by Prime Minister Trudeau, and we remain in regular contact with our Canadian partners, and it's critical that Canada's investigation proceed and uh, the perpetrators be brought to justice. We also have, um, as we've previously said, uh, publicly and privately urged 
urged the Indian government to cooperate uh, in the Canadian investigation and uh, uh, cooperate uh, in those efforts. India has made its stand clear. One, we told the Canadians that uh, this is not the government of India's policy. Two, we told the Canadians saying that, look, if you have something specific, if you have something relevant, you know, let us know. We are open to looking at it. Uh, do understand that there is an environment out there. So that is important in a way to, uh, to factor in. Then why is the British media banking on Pakistan ISI's tail on India? Let's debate. So, uh, in a sense here, The Guardian is complaining about the killing of terrorists. The Guardian is loudly, loudly complaining in its obvious editorial stance that India is doing a very bad thing by killing terrorists. Okay. So, what we find out therefore, Sushant, is that tremendous sympathy that The Guardian has for terrorists who in their view should be encouraged to live long lives, happy lives, uh, lives of fulfillment. Uh, the second point is that they are saying that all of this has been told to them by Pakistani government sources. They failed to establish, General Bakshi, that the Pakistani government officials are the ones who are building and financing the terrorists. They don't add that as a rider. They try to create a line of separation between the Pakistani government, the Pakistani intelligence agency, the Pakistani army, and the terrorist groups, which everybody knows does not exist. Okay, let's begin. I have with me tonight Faraz Saeed, political analyst from Pakistan, and Hamid Khan, uh, who's also joining us, analyst and journalist from Islamabad. Uh, what is this story? I mean, I'm very confused, Faraz. What is the point that is being made here? That India killed Pakistani terrorists. How bad? I mean, is that the point? You should be happy because you keep coming on my program and saying there is so much terrorism in Pakistan. So if you are killing a few of your terrorists, you should say thank you to us if we are. are you, is you should be thanking us for killing terrorists. You are complaining uh, about it. You decide Anna? what your line is. Yes, Hamid? Um, yes, Anna, it, is, it means that it is an admission that Indian raw is killing the people in different countries, whether it is Canada, England or anywhere else. And the Guardian report is very clear that Indian agency, RAW and other agencies are uh, extremely violating the international laws and they are killing the uh, people, uh, you know, on, as a state policy. And India is involved in the straight terrorism already and Kulboshan Yadev and then the killing of, uh, uh, you know, in Canada is all the big evidences. I mean, it is a time for you, uh, Arnab Goswami, General Bakshi and everybody to ask from your government the, yeah. that why they are doing so fascist open terrorism now. This is the question from Indian government to ask, not from me, know, not I, from anybody else. And this yeah, is not okay, a report. I'll, I'll let, this is not I'll a let, report from anyway, me. Listen, this listen. is a report by Guardian, I, one of a very reliable uh, newspaper, one of a very uh, reliable, which you have mentioned in many programs. When Guardian says anything in your favor, you do 10 million programs on it. But when Guardian exposes Indian terrorism, when Guardian exposes that India is using, uh, you know, killing of uh, on the other soils as their tool, then you may, uh, then you uh, criticize uh, Guardian. That is yeah, not the right way. I want, I want, clear, I want, this listen is a to me, listen 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 to me, first of all, 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 you, you want okay, to, Hamid, then you Hamid, go to Hamid, the, the, I will not uh, give free. Why don't you go to and no, uh, uh, no, talk no, about no, what's tell happening you, in uh, Palestine I, and the way, uh, you know, Israeli... Will you stop? I mean, I'm responding to you, man. You're being very rude tonight, Hamid. What's wrong with you? No, I'm then I'll have to treat you, you like I treat I'm other Pakistanis always. But I'll, I'm trying to be polite. I'm explaining you. Let, listen to me. Listen to me, Pramit. First of all, first of all, you are on a big network. You know, 430 million people watch the Republic Media Network compared to a small, tiny media group like Guardian. So we are too big to be depending on the Guardian. First point. We are a big media Guardian group. Guardian has Republic more credibility than you. Okay? Don't compare us to small channel. outfits <laughs> like Guardian. Chalo, hai na, aapka hai. Chalo, anyway. Okay, now my second point is, my point is that General Bakshi, they should be happy that these people have died. 
I don't want anyone to die. I mean, I am, I am against the idea of killing anyone. But Shahid Latif was the key aide of the jaish e mohammed chief Masood Azhar and the mastermind of the 2016 attack on the Pathan Court Air Base. What do you want to do? Give him nishan e Pakistan? These, these people have died? No. Do you? You should be thanking us, you? General Bakshi. I mean, I don't understand. Who are these people? No, no. Who, who are, what? General Bakshi, please. General Bakshi. Thank you, sir. You know, you know, Arnab, every single terrorist less is less of a boj on this poor earth. The Pakistanis have had it up to their gills. They started creating these terrorist organizations. Hillary Clinton years back advised them that if you, you know, keep snakes in your backyard, feed them milk every day in the fond hope <coughs> that they'll only kill uh, and bite your neighbors, then one fine day you'll pay a heavy cost. They are paying it today. And, uh, you know, if their terrorists are being killed, I thought they should celebrate because they are not able to handle them. But the fact of the matter is, Arnab, the way we kill terrorists is like what we did, is like what we did post Udi with the special forces strike in which we killed 40 of oh, them yeah. in their own launch pads. The way Who's we hit Balakot with that's, our that's mirages we and we killed 200, 200. That is what um, our defense minister and our prime minister meant when they said, Ghar mein ghuske marenge. Now there is the Mossad, there is the KGB, there is the FSB who have been killing terrorists in all other countries, you know, at, uh, without a uh, increase on their uh, route. But the fact of the matter is, whether, 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 whether India is doing it or not, show us the proof. This <laughs> young lady from the Guardian, you know, she was their art and culture correspondent, Arnab. She was their art and culture correspondent and she has suddenly graduated to terrorism. Uh, She's Amrit gone Amrit to Sheikh Pakistan, has. been wined Amrit and Sheikh dined Amrit. by the ISI and, and given a tutorial, given a tutorial on what is happening. I'm saying give us the proof, show us the proof. Yes. Whether Canada so, or here or wherever, hand, show General us Bakshi. the proof. The point is, General point, Bakshi, point. General Bakshi, on the one hand, you are admitting point. that you killed it by the name of terrorism. On the other hand, you are asking for the proof. Please make up your mind whether you killed it or not. Then we will talk about yes. the proof. Yeah, then, I made then up my mind. Talk about the... You haven't even heard what I said. No, you I heard you, Janasa. This is, please, this is what happens when you don't hear what the other side has done. No, Janasa, I, I heard, heard you very well. That the way we killed terrorists... So, maybe you got me wrong. I am saying the way we killed terrorists across the border is what we did post Uri. We sent in our special forces in your territory, three to four kilometers deep, hit yeah, your you large pads, killed 40 terrorists trees. there. When that was not enough trees. of a message. Let me finish. You are not the okay. only person okay. on this I, I, debate. I, I, I have, a, I have, a, I have a solution finish. to this. And okay. I am telling okay. you... Oh, wow, wow, wow. Gigi. Gigi, uh, Anasa. Uh, Arna, what I was saying was that the way we kill is the way we kill 200 odd Pakistani terrorists in Bala Court. That is the way we do it. Just in case you weren't very clear as yet. Yeah, the that point is, the, is, is <laughs> the point is, the point is, the situations that you are making, Sushant, 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 let me, let me tell you, uh, Hamid, Hamid, thank you, let me get in, let me get in just Faraz and uh, Barrister Amrit Ahmed Sheikh also. Arnab, see, see, give no, I won't seconds. give you, yeah, there are other, three other panelists, aise nahi karte Hamid ji, Hamid ji aise nahi karte, I kuch bol raha hu, three panelists ne abhi tak kuch kaha nahi hai, kya aap baat kare? Nahi, aapko nahi dunga time, I, 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 I must come in typically, no, 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 one minute sir, one minute, the point is, the point is, First of all, Faraz and Barrister Amrit, Sushant will tell you the same thing. If you feel that we are killing Pakistani terrorists and we are very bad people, we are killing Pakistani terrorists, then the right thing to do is to send a letter to the Indian Embassy, put in a complaint, put it through the right diplomatic channels. We will put it through the right diplomatic channels, put the appropriate investigators, take adequate time, do an investigation and give you an appropriate reply. What is this calling someone from Guardian and saying Indians net in Pakistani terrorists ko mara? It makes no impact to us for us. 
But it's, you know, I, I, it makes no impact. I think you're doing it the wrong way. If you no, I don't yes, know. Faraz. Case the case the case in point here is that the Guardian's report has substantiated the very claim of the Pakistani government, the current government and the previous government that the India the, that the India is sponsoring terror on uh, foreign grounds. Be it U.S., be it Canada, know, and, and the claims nothing. that the U.S. and Canada were making was substantiated through the reports. Now, moving on. Now, on one end, you claim that oh, we've killed uh, terrorists in Pakistan, and there has to be the right kind of recourse uh, to uh, you know uh, contact or communicate with the uh, with the Delhi government. Yes. The point here is first, you yes, admit yes, that you yes. have been sponsoring state-led terrorism on the foreign soil. Only then the governments will talk to the Indian government. Only then the U.S. government and the Canadian government will deal with the New Delhi. Because first, you have to admit, and that you are admitting on the national channel, where apparently 413 million people. No, why should? Why watch should? Why should? Network. Okay, one minute. Faraz. There is a Faraz. Admission. Faraz. Faraz, Faraz, uh, I, Faraz, Faraz, I, Faraz. People are watching this program. It is one of the highest. It is the highest watched program in the country. I'm I agree aware that. of it. I am. It it matters. I, my simple answer is Sushant. Sushant is a very influential commentator as a general bakshi. All I will say is, what if we don't admit? I'm sorry to sound brazen about it. What will you do? What can you do? Second point is we are a very busy country. You see, we are busy going to the moon. Hosting the G20, we are going to have the third largest economy I in the world, rape, right? Rape we are busy country. working on uh, technology. In the uh, 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 we, we don't have time to. We don't have. Yeah. Why should we try to kill your misleading your own? You kill your own terrorists. Sushant, is, Sushant will appropriately. Arnab, that's called this diversification. You spend on economy, so, and then you also spend on terrorism. No, no, also, Sushant. Well. No, no, we don't that's want to die. We, we don't. And I acknowledge no, no, that no, uh, no, 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 Sushant is I getting, Sushant has that, Sushant, Sushant, Sushant is responding, Sushant, Sushant, what do you think so should be I, done now? You know, Arnab, I am a How little do we bemused, I, I am a little bemused by the fact that Pakistan needs substantiation and authentication from Guardian for uh, certain dossiers which they have prepared. Can you understand the magnitude of what Faraz is saying? That they have produced certain no. uh, certain dossiers, and he says the Guardian has substantiated it. I don't see how no, a newspaper can substantiate something which a government has produced. Number one. Number two, if they have actually got prosecutable evidence, then why isn't it in the public domain? What is the prosecutable evidence they have got? Have they got any videos? Since they claim to have safe city projects all over the place, they seem to have cameras and and CCTV and everything all over the place. Uh, surely they would have captured something. We haven't seen anything in the public domain, at least. Uh, there are forced confessions from people. How many of them have been actually prosecuted and uh, brought before the courts? Uh, and are those court proceedings open? Absolutely not. Uh, the other gentleman who says that the Canadians have pro produced proof. Can you please show us what is the evidence that the Canadians have proof, uh, provided? Not a shred of evidence has been provided by the Canadians so far. Not even a shred of evidence. All they, had, they have uh, leveled is credible allegations. Whatever credible allegations means. I don't know. It can either be credible or it can be allegation. It can't be credible allegation. It's an oxymoron of sorts. So, so I can't understand where that is coming from. The next if point is... The question, please, you've had your say, let other people speak. The next question which I have for the Pakistani uh, gentleman is, you know, uh, okay, fine, let us for a moment assume that India has been going inside Pakistan and bumping these guys off. Who were these guys? Were they pillars of Pakistani society? Is Jaish e Mohammed the pillar of your society? Is Lashkar e Taiba a pillar of your society? Uh, you know, awesome. these are, awesome. is, a, is, a, is a hijacker of the eight, IC 814 uh, flight. A pillar of your society. So, why? And what were these guys doing in Pakistan? Superb. What was a hijacker of an Indian Airlines yeah. plane doing in Karachi? Please let us know. Why was uh, uh, ideally a hijacker of a plane yeah. should have been prosecuted inside Pakistan and put in prison and the key thrown away? What was he doing? Doing normal business in Pakistan? Have you 
studied your own track record of terrorism you know you are pointing fingers at other people yeah yeah well said have you seen your own track Ishan, record how much you have Ishan been involved ji. in terrorism Can the world over now? so if okay and let us for a moment assume it, uh, that the guardian has published something number one it has only regurgitated old information which has already been there in the public domain a number of people have already published this information so there's no new earth shattering path breaking investigation which these guys have done none whatsoever nothing absolutely zinc so what is the new thing which everybody is getting their knickers in a twist about nothing uh, and 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 for a moment let us assume that whatever they are saying is true do they realize that they might have done it for ideological and political purposes but do they realize that this is actually going to boomerang on them because if they are trying to target the current government in india uh, by saying that look this is a government which goes and carries out these kind of operations around the world frankly speaking they're just adding a couple of 100 million more votes to the vote bank of this government rather than actually undermining this government they're only adding to the reputation of this government as one which is not going to you know turn the other cheek uh, kind which many of the previous governments were doing that this government is not going to do this it's going to give a blow for a blow so frankly speaking if i was in the bjp for example i would have certainly sent a thank you card to guardian and said can you please publish some more reports like this because it does a hell of a lot for my brand equity no, than anything okay. else will do Shan, can i say something now we do not get that kind of time to explain our, our part of the story so exactly. kudos to sushant and kudos to you to give him uh, unequivocal air time to explain his case yeah can i say something now arna if you no, give me 2 minutes i tell you faraz 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 save the sarcasm i i i am responding to faraz see faraz i'll tell you one thing when you are when you are headlining a big story and coming to a big conclusion you cannot write a fairy tale it is incumbent upon the journalist to at least name one specific source under the cover of journalistic anonymity you cannot say i have sources but i will not name them i could be speaking to you faraz and calling you a pakistani intelligence official in this specific report this three byline report not one individual official has been named except towards the very end as background information a person who who is part of some think tank is referred to but as far as any of the headline grabbing parts of the story not one official has been named this is scurrilous in terms of but journalism but can i so i'm not now? i'm not trying to take away time from you you understand no, no. But there has yeah, to no, be I'd like for us to reply because he we made that observation. I'm hitting him back here. Yeah, Adam, you're yes, absolutely Faraz. right. There has He's to right. be substantiated sources to confirm, and there has to be trichotomy of sources to confirm one single report. But the point is, there are editorial checks, and it's not uh, upon one reporter to report, file a report, and it's published. Uh, How do you uh, know? There, there No 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 no, 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 suppose, suppose, suppose I put out a report today that Pakistani intelligence officials have told me that Parvez Musharraf paid ten crore rupees to kill Benazir Bhutto. But Arnab, suppose I put out that report. Many people suspect Musharraf said. No, no, one minute, one minute. Hey, one minute. Suppose I say that reliable Pakistani intelligence officials have told me that Musharraf killed Benazir Bhutto and paid ten crore rupees. But I don't name a single person. Will you accept Arnab, my will report? Editor, will your editor approve you that report? It? Will your editor approve that report? If it's no, no, not substantial. First, no, no. First, first of all, it, first of all, it won't be carried on Republic. But I'm saying first if anybody all, puts out a story like that you'll say without naming the person you're running a no. fake piece it's fake news I mean I have uh, seen I'm you so don't don't take a convenient argument for us uh, you have been quoting the same guardian the same guardian again and again to prove your point in the past why are you not never in my life again? I'll tell you you are you out of your mind are you out of your mind quoting the guardian is like quoting the sun as a source of journalism What so are you talking you, about? 
Now my you question, don't, you I don't, have never done you that. Don't agree with the Canadian I have never done that. You don't agree with the, I have with, never done that. The American prosecutors. You don't agree with the Qataris who who, who have held your three uh, navy officers and now they've of course uh, been withdrawn. You don't agree with the Pakistani government. Nobody is held. They have, they've all been freed. One phone call from Delhi freed. Nobody yeah, is held. They were on India is a powerful throw. country. They were on we throw told throw the Qataris they released them. That was diplomacy at its peak. But they were on the death yeah, row for a certain reason. Yeah, but one phone call is enough. No, we are a big country. But they were on the death row. Yeah, yeah, but, but we are a big country. No. Yes, yeah, so Qatar knows we are a big country. They won't mess with us. So you can do all the badmashi you want. So you can do all the, uh, uh, you know, terrorism. Badmashi, we are not doing. General Bakshi, General Bakshi, please. No, you, I, the, the, please don't reduce. Your whole position is based on all the admissions that the India has adopted uh, uh, foreign countries, uh, you know, terrorism as a state policy. That is what, what admission from Sushant, that is what you are admitting oh, sir, on top we, of it by yeah. denying the fact of uh, no, report Sushant by the Sushant. On the other hand, Arnab. doing a complete program, it means that it has some substantial uh, credibility. That's why you are doing this program that you know that people will give a weightage to the report of the Guardian. That's why you are doing this program against Guardian because you know that people will understand the credibility of Guardian more than Republic's. Okay, uh, let me ask uh, one. General uh, Bakshi and Sushant, one one question to that, one question to Barrister Amrit because not spoken. Then I'll come back to you. Absolutely yeah. wrong. You must, I am curious. I am I am a I am no, a I am a I am a curious kind of person. So I am by nature a curious person. I like to ask these curious questions. And my curious question is to Barrister Amrit. Ahmed Sheikh, Barrister Amrit Ahmed Sheikh, these people, who are they that you are weeping buckets for them? Hanzla Andnan, mastermind of the attack on the BSF convoy in, Kashmir, in Jammu and Kashmir in 2015, he is dead. Riaz Ahmed, affiliated to LET, one of the main conspirators behind the Dhangri terror attack in Jammu and Kashmir, he is dead. Bashir Ahmed Peer, Alai Simtiaz Alam, Hizbul Mujahideen terrorist dead. Now, if all the people who are trying to do terrorism in India have are dead, maybe it's their bad karma. It's it's not like we are killing them. They try to do bad things to India, and they're all dead. They try to do terrorism in India. They're all dead. And so, seeing the <laughs> fact that they are dead, nobody in Pakistan will want to be dead and therefore will not carry out acts of terrorism against India or feel they are going to be safe in Pakistan. You can come back to Pakistan but you'll still be dead. Now that doesn't mean we are killing them. There's no link there, Barrister. Sir, thank you so much for having me on your show and I think that this is one of the four most and crucial topics that uh, we need to address at hand. Firstly, I would like to say one thing that uh, you just quoted this thing that if you have an issue with these deaths and if you have issues with the way these activities has been carried out, then you're supposed to write a letter to the Delhi embassy and then you're supposed to make this report system and then go according to the law as you recently just you yes. said this thing. So yes. I'll just say the similar thing in this situation as well that okay, that we also agree with this thing that these activities were carried out. These things had been done. So shouldn't the, the, the same action had been taken by your side as well to our respective government and not rather than just intruding in our personal sovereignty of the state and taken action by all by yourself? Because I because what I understand by this thing is that ke har mulki apni autonomy is sir. Or agar aap us autonomy ko bifurcate karke apne tarike se us cheez ko hand in hand karenge, so that is not fair. So if you by law ki baat karte hain aur governments ko involve karne ki baat karte hain, then the government should have been involved. And then it should have been taken out in that proper procedure, not according to somebody else's way. Despite the fact, I totally agree with you, okay, they, they are terrorists, they are not the right people. Yes, they are not the pillar of support. Yes, they are not the right people. I totally agree with that. But does that give you the privilege or does that give you the right to still intervene to an autonomous state and carry out those activities, as per you said, not done according to the law that has been set out by all these sovereign states? I don't think so, sir. That is not justifiable at any cost and at Achha. any point. Achha. 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 Achha.
uh, actually approached the government of Pakistan at least dozens of times and given them information, given them dossiers, given them all kinds of things to act against terrorists who have operated inside India and run away back to Pakistan. And not a damn thing has been done by the Pakistani government. I, I hope the barrister is aware of that entire history which has gone in the past. So it's not as though India has not been uh, following the legal channels and approaching the government of Pakistan, whether it was 2611, whether it was the Pathan court uh, attacks, terrorist attacks, when we even allowed a Pakistani team to come to an uh, Indian Air Force base to collect evidence and to see the scene of crime because we realized that that is Amrit part Ji. of the judicial process. Uh, Ji. So we've done it. What have uh, you Amrit done? Ji. Please tell us. Um, Amrit Ji. No, no, Amrit Ji. अमृत जी अमृत जी आपका कहना ये है नव जैन बख्शी टू कमेंट आपका कहना ये है कि ये लोग बुरे लोग ये टेररिस्ट लोग हमारे अपने लोग हैं हम खुद उनको मारेंगे आप बस हमें फोन करके उनका व्हाट्सएप लोकेशन बता दीजिए हम उनको मार देंगे आप चिंता मत कीजिए अगर इतना आसान था नहीं मैं ये तो फिर यूएसए को घुस के ओसामा को मारना क्यों पड़ा नहीं नहीं आपके आपकी ये ओसामा भी तो आपका ही अपना आदमी था ना आपने मारा क्या आपने तो डिनाई की that he is living in Abbottabad, right next to your military headquarters. Unko ghusna para na, maanna para na. Please. I am just saying that if we are supporting, if we are arguing on this point, that we are supposed to stop this these terrorist activities and we are supposed to make sure that these things are finished, whether they are in India or whether they are in Pakistan, then we should follow up a rule of law. Sir, so we have the example of Alwanya okay. attack as General well Bakshi. over here. What I, believe, what I believe over here is that in these particular okay. kind of situations, or we need I to do is that, that we are... Ji, ji, no, no, sir, no, no. Please go ahead. Sir, 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 sir
this is Sajid Meer. This man, everybody is hunting. When the pressure kept mounting, suddenly, after Jesus Christ, Sajid Meer was resurrected. And he rose from his grave. And within a day, he was taken to court and he was sentenced to court. Was this an intelligence failure? Or was this an intelligence cover-up? Please let, let us know. Why did the Indian government or RAW allowed eight uh, terrorists to uh, you know, go through the Mumbai port, attack uh, why, did, why did the Pakistan government allow 10 terrorists to enter army I mean, public school in Peshawar? Why did you allow 10 terrorists to enter army you, public you school won't, in You won't learn that way, will you? I mean, you won't learn. For us, for us, let me tell you, distinguish yourself right now. Realize the state of your country isn't one where a young person like why you should come out and start defending or finding some quasi-proxy reason to defend terrorism. Okay, I'll close this debate, ladies and gentlemen, Nobody because I have a huge debate coming terrorism. up next. On a film, the Kerala terrorism. story. Nobody is defending terrorism. And whether, but you whether the Kerala act. story should be played out on Doordarshan, back it in just 30 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Only 30 seconds. Amity has been ranked India's number one private university for the 11th year by India Today, a testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kerala story, the movie is once again in the middle of an electoral storm this time. Left and Congress upset about it being played on broadcast on Doordarshan. That also on a day when in the national capital, the Congress is going on and on about not clamping down on censorship in its manifesto. Let's debate. May 5, 2023. A film depicting terrorism and the reality of ISIS was met with widespread protest. Slogans raised, sit-in protests staged, screenings blocked. As you know very well that there were so many cases to stop the film everywhere. Uh, Supreme Court has thrown this petition out three times. Uh, Chennai High Court has thrown the petition out today. But tomorrow there are six petitions in Kerala High Court trying to stop the film from getting released. After a battle with the censor board, the Kerala story was finally told. Eleven months later, the Kerala story is once again caught in the eye of the storm. The left is seeing red about the movie being broadcast on Doordarshan. They have even resorted to calling Doordarshan a propaganda machine of BJP and RSS now. Joining the chorus is Ally Congress. And that too on a day when Congress is ranting and raving about not clamping down on censorship and being the beacon for freedom of expression. Hamare Goshna Patrame Samidanik Nai Constitutional Justice Khandme Lok Tantra Bachao Baise Mukti Se Lekar Media even the Kerala High Court has set the record straight. Then why is the No Censorship Brigade seeking a pullback now? Let's debate. Subhash Chandran and Sanju Verma, Subhash Chandran of the CPM, what do you want people to, what do you want Doordarshan to show? Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, what <laughs> no, is actually, the problem? The, 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 the Before an election, you want Mickey Mouse, uh, Donald Duck, 20,000 leagues under the, the, the sea, what do you want people to see? Uh, now it's not the Doordarshan, it's not the, the, the broadcast of the Indian, uh, the Union government. 
now it has become the sandarshan it has become uh, it should be renamed as sandarshan or uh, modi darshan and you don't watch so if you don't want to who is forcing you no actually actually if arnab is showing the the kerala story in uh, republic we don't have any problem but that's a by the, the, the doordarshan it has a, a relevance in the society it is not it's a public it's a public uh, channel tv channel owned by the government of india and now they the rss the modi government is using it as a propaganda machine to uh, push their political agenda so this is not acceptable they are trying to divide the society you should understand so you are a lawyer the, give me a legal the, argument the, You are a lawyer. No, give me one legal argument. Give give Sanju Verma one legal argument. You are a lawyer. Give one legal argument actually, against it, and then the she'll respond. One legal I, I, argument. I, I, I have to raise the political argument. When 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 the, the when it become political, I will have to raise the political argument. So now, see, you know when this movie was released, it was released on the evening of uh, the the Karnataka election, the eve of Karnataka election. and you know what happened in karnataka election the result of karnataka election how the people reacted they the, the bjp the sangha parivar the, the producers of this movie they tried to use this um, movie as a political agenda for the karnataka election and you know how the karnataka people reacted so even now they are trying to telecast it in the doordarshan for a political games and we know how the, the indian people will react tomorrow this is not acceptable for Arnab, the indian now, people may this I... is a dbc politics the, the, the bjp The Sangha Parivar is going for the DBC just... politi- politics. Ah, oh, now I need to make my rebuttal. Okay, why before an election, Sanju? Oh, no, how <laughs> can you? How can you blame it? You know, oh, no, this is not fair. I heard him very patiently. If you want, I will not speak. Let him continue. Once he is done, I will speak. Because you know, every debate cannot be a fighting match. I heard the gentleman very patiently without heckling him. Please continue. I'm, I'm, Please I'm, continue. I'm, Once you are done, I will speak. Now, now, Once now you, you are done with, I will now, speak. Now you are done with the Kerala. The continue Indian to Kerala. cry. Subhash, 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 Subhash. Let her, let her reply to you. You had the first three questions. Let her, let her. I am asking her why now. Let her reply to you. Why now? Or no, forget about you know the Kerala story uh, having been made only very recently. Imagine a hypothetical situation that the Kerala story was made in 2021, and if it was released then, they would have said, "Oh, it is being released with an eye on the Assam Assembly elections. It is being released with an eye on the West Bengal Assembly elections. It is being released with an eye on the Kerala Assembly elections." Had it been released in 2022, they would have said, "Oh, it is being released in 2022 with an eye on Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Manipur, and Punjab Assembly elections, and of course Goa Assembly elections." Had it been released in early 2023, you would have said. It is being released with an eye on Tripura, Meghalaya, and Nagaland elections. Had it been released in end of 2023, you would have accused the BJP and RSS uh, of releasing a movie with an eye on Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh assembly elections. Now you will say this issue is being raked up ahead of 2024 elections. So my first argument is this: elections are there, some or the other election in India every two months or three months. So if you accuse the BJP of timing events and movie releases. Uh, you know, to ensure that it benefits in assembly elections or local body elections or even general elections, you are actually barking up the wrong tree because that is completely, uh, you know, uh, a statement that bears no uh, logic. My second point: the Doordarshan came up in 1959. The Prasar Bharati Act was passed in Parliament in 1990, but it was only in 1997 that the Prasar Bharati actually started functioning. And once the Prasar Bharati became functional. In 1997, since then, the Doordarshan has, for all practical purposes, been independent because Prasar Bharati is a statutory independent autonomous body, which is not a handmaiden of either the BJP or the RSS. So, my second point is, since 1997, Doordarshan slash Prasar Bharati have largely functioned as independent bodies. they don't listen to the bjp nor are they obliged to listen to the bjp my third point to people at pinarayi vijay who claim oh you know 32000 people did not get converted in kerala only maybe three or four women my point is fine let us assume hypothetically 32000 women did not get converted from hinduism or christianity to islam it was only three women 
because the Kerala story is based on the lives of three women: Nimisha Nair, Sonia Sebastian, and Nerin Jacob. And this is a fact. This is this is not some kahani or kissa that Sanju Verma is spewing on national television. These three women married Afghani Muslims, Muslims of Afghani origin. They converted to Islam and then they joined the Taliban or the ISIS. This is documented in the movie also and in real life also. So to say that the Kerala story is fictitious, that is a whole lot of balderdash. Now my fourth point is who is V S Achyutanandan? V S Achyutanandan was the Kerala Chief Minister between 2006 and 2011. After that, for 15 years, you know uh, he has also uh, served in various other positions within the CPM Politburo. A CPM Chief Minister V S Achyutanandan is on record saying that yes. Love jihad has been a major festering problem in Kerala. This is V S Achyutanandan. This is not Sanju Verma. This is not Narendra Modi. This is not Amit Shah. A CPM Politburo member has said love jihad is a problem that needs to be addressed in a state like Kerala. My other point: you guys keep saying, "Arey nee, you know, Doordarshan is a handmaiden." Blah blah blah. I mean, people like Pinare Vijayan have even whitewashed the genocide of Kashmiri pundits. That happened in 1990. Maybe 60,000 or two lakhs were displaced, killed, and you guys say, "Kuch hua hi nahi." Sab changa si. People who say Kashmiri genocide hua hi nahi. You want to sit and lecture me? Are you going to lecture me? I don't need your certificate. Subhash. Okay, Subhash. Listen. Even Muslims have recognized that radicalization, massive organized conversion is going on. so if a truth is being put out radicalization is not a few new phenomenon in kerala where muslims account for almost 30% of the total population sociologist and author dr n p hafiz mohammad august 2021 right president of the muslim education society dr p a fazal ghafoor said it is true that fundamentalism is growing in all communities more so in the muslim community so fundamentalism radicalization forced conversion love jihad if these are realities let people see reality we 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 what do you want people to see truth. but in this movie what do you want doordarshan to show no they are see may i tell one thing you are uh, you belong to you may not accept this a, as the truth no, doesn't mean there, we don't there, see there was a pro problem of uh, ulfa terrorist in assam so can we uh, the entire assam is blame as a terrorist There was a in a once upon a time the Ulfa terrorists were there in Assam. Who is calling? Now through this movie, the the entire Kerala society has blamed as terrorists. They are trying to to, to um, demoralize. No, to, they have not said that. Where have they done that? Kashmir they have said also. this is happening in Kerala. Know, know, it doesn't say all of Kerala. No, no, no. It doesn't say all of Kerala. That's that's your assumption. Don't lie. No, 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 no. It doesn't say all of Kerala. There was a don't film called Bombay, which was made. One minute, one minute. There was a film they called Bombay, which was made. Does it say that everybody in Bombay was was part actively participating in a riot? No. Exactly. Can't hear you. Means pointing the 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 culture the the culture of the Kerala, how the 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 social fabric of the Kerala, so it, it's totally uh, means demoralizing the Kerala society means in uh, the Indian context. Here. So we cannot accept it. They say the, through this movie they say thirty two thousand women have been converted. No, this Islam censorship is, can't I, be allowed. Subhash, Subhash, this is super censorship. Is this is very Stalinist. This is a Stalinist approach. Forget about thirty-two or three. Why should love jihad even happen at all? Why should I be asked to convert if I'm a Hindu or a Christian woman into Islam? If I'm marrying a person of another religion, if I don't wish to convert, then I should not be asked to do so. I can't hear him. I can't hear him. I can't hear him. As a consenting adult, I may be wanting to marry somebody from another religion, but I may not necessarily want to convert into another religion. So why should I be coerced into doing so? That is indeed love you have very quickly or not? I want to read out okay, the judgment Subhash, of October Subhash, 2023. Please, Subhash, or not? Just give me 20 seconds. Subhash, you are saying seconds. you are saying secularism. No, no, one minute. So, Can no, ten seconds. For 20 seconds. My ten He's seconds. He's already spoken. Subhash, you are talking about secularism. You are talking about secularism. Tell me, uh, Ramayan also also was telecast on Doordarshan. Ramayan, Ramayan, you know. Anna, 
इस महाशय को भागवत गीता का स्पेलिंग नहीं पता होगा इस महाशय को महाभारत का स्पेलिंग नहीं पता होगा इस महाशय को वेदों का स्पेलिंग नहीं पता होगा Because for them secularism means Hindu phobia. So, Bhai, secularism means radical Islamism. Now, you cannot continue to give hints. So, Bhai, 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 You, we know In that, case, that you the Gujarat riots, the, 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 the Musafar Musafar Nagar riots. We know about right. the Gujarat riots. Can you blame the entire Gujarat society? Are blaming 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 the entire Gujarat society? This is a judgment given by the special CBI judge Prabhat Kumar Sharma as recently as October 2023 whereby he handed out rigorous imprisonment of 15 years one five to two people one was a man called Rakibul Hasan and another was a man called Mushtaq Ahmed and there was a lady Rakibul Hasan's mother now why are these three people sentenced to 15 Years rigorous imprisonment. It was because in 2014, Rakibul Hasan married India's champion shooter, a lady called Tara Sahdeo. But Rakibul Hasan did not marry Tara Sahdeo as Rakibul Hasan. Rakibul Hasan married Tara Sahdeo under the alias of Ranjit Kohli. Tara Sahdeo found out after a good seven eight years that he is Ranjit Kohli. ये तो रंजीत कोहली एक्चुअल में रकीबुल हसन है इमेजिन दिस कुड हैपन टू अ नेशनल देयर वर जुडिशियल ऑर्डर्स अगेंस्ट द बीजेपी लीडर्स लाइक ओके नाउ यहां ऑन द साइड चलो जस्ट आल्सो देयर देयर वर देयर वर जुडिशियल ऑर्डर्स अगेंस्ट मिस्टर अमित शाह आल्सो आई गिव यू एन एग्जांपल ऑफ लव जिहाद Nothing happened. One one minute, one minute. You you put out a lie which was squashed in the the highest court of the country. I will not allow you to try and put out any any rumor out there without basis. The Supreme Court of India has rejected your absolute inane arguments in the Judge Loya case. That kind of speculative. Speculative Put falsification of the facts has been corrected. Don't don't do this here. Don't do this here. Then you put out the whole truth. Say we were say we spread a lie, and the lie was contradicted by the country's highest court. There, got you there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time I have tonight. I see no problem with the Kerala story being played on Doordarshan or on any private channel for that matter. What do you think? Tell me what you think, and have a great week. And ladies and gentlemen, see you soon. Good night and goodbye. Good evening and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's not about Sanjay Nirupam quitting the Congress. It's not about that. It's not even about Congress spokesperson, face of the Congress on television, Gaurav Valbab, also quitting the Congress. It's not about that quitting either. It's about what we learn each time. There is another wave of desertions and quittings from the Congress, from the Vardra Congress, and what these frustrated, once Congress insiders reveal when they finally gather their guts and walk out. of the rot in the congress party what they reveal about the horror stories the muck and the chaos within and that is why i'm beginning tonight with a tell all interview of sanjay nirupam you must hear him sanjay nirupam reveals the chamcha giri the shady fixing the possible money deals the five fighting camps and the dirty dirty details of the fight between the priyanka vadra camp and the rahul camp you see viewers people reveal the truth in two situations to me they talk to me 
in two situations where I feel they are speaking the complete truth, either in a moment of extreme anger or in a moment of complete frustration. And it is then that we must listen to them carefully because that is the raw truth. When they are furious or frustrated, the rest is cosmetics. Tonight I have managed to catch Sanjay Nirupam in a moment of complete frustration. He's a frustrated man. He's completely frustrated with the Congress party. And so listen to him very closely tonight. Listen to him and decide whether you can believe the whining, the constant, irritating, desperate whining of Rahul Gandhi anymore. Or whether you believe that all his irritating, whining, complaining, his stupid excuses are a cover for the stench and rot in the insides of the Congress party. दुनिया की सबसे पुरानी भाषा तमिल भाषा हिंदुस्तान की है मैं दुनिया को बताना चाहता हूं सबसे पुरानी भाषा का गर्व प्राप्त है वो मेरी तमिल भाषा है As the Gandhi family keeps the Congress guessing over the Amethi seat, Robert Vadra threw his hat into the ring. वो चाहते हैं कि गांधी परिवार का कोई भी सदस्य वापस आए, वहाँ वो भारी बमोत से जिताएंगे, यहाँ तक कि वो मेरे से भी प्रेरणा करते हैं और आशा करते हैं कि मैं वहाँ अपना पहला कदम अगर राजनीति में रखता हूँ और सांसद बनने की सोचता हूँ तो मैं अमेठी को ही रिप्रेजेंट करूँ क्योंकि मैंने निन्यानवे से अपनी जो प्रचार प्रियंका के साथ शुरू किया वो अमेठी में ही था दिग ट्विस्ट काम From the Delhi studios of Republic TV, it's time for Arnab Goswami on the debate. Viewers, I, I disagree with the idea of introducing caste and religious identity as a quasi-reservation in the higher judiciary of India. Judges should not be appointed on the basis of whether they are from the minority community or not. Or whether they are from this caste or that caste, that is not the way you appoint judges. But this is only one of the many reasons I disagree with the Vadra Congress manifesto today. I also disagree with the idea of introducing some random apprenticeship for young people in India. Apprenticeship? That also 8,000 rupees a month, Mr. Chidambaram and Rahul Gandhi? For well-qualified, highly qualified Indians? 8,000 rupees a month, be happy, that's the Congress idea. An apprenticeship is not a job. And Indians need jobs, not internships and apprenticeships. And Mr. P. Chidambaram must know that 8,000 rupees a month is not enough to live on. It is less than the minimum wage. Indians need jobs. Rahul Gandhi, jobs, not apprenticeships. Foreign investment, infrastructure development, growth, economic growth, Vixit Bharat, this creates jobs. 
and you want to take us back 30 years and throw okay you be happy with 8000 rupees a month this is an apprenticeship be happy this is a congress party gift you what rubbish i also disagree with this idea of moving more items from the concurrent list over which both the center and state have some jurisdiction entirely to the state list which is another manifesto promise of the congress party what is this india needs to be unified and strong and the congress party is saying reduce the powers of the central government reduce the powers of the central government give it away to the states give it away to the states why because you are not in power at the center if the powers of the center are reduced and the powers of the state are increased we wonder why you are doing it because are you doing it in the name of federalism or do you want to break up the country and since it comes from the party of rahul gandhi who goes around the whole world saying india is not a nation anyway it's some kind of a negotiation i find his intentions completely ominous and suspicious you should too not that everything in the congress party vadra congress manifesto is bad but it's it's too predictable it's too hackneyed it sounds like the manifesto of another era it's not a 2024 manifesto for sure that's my take we're debating this tonight the hackneyed congress party manifesto debate 1 the seat in debate 2 ladies and gentlemen you have the guardian newspaper for whom the biggest source is the isi they've gone out of their mind these left lip papers in debate number 3 this evening viewers the left and the congress are seeing red over the kerala story why wasn't this cleared by the censor board Debate three, and here are the headlines this Friday evening on the debate tonight. Big political controversy as the Congress Party promises major shockers in its manifesto. BJP mocks it. The Guardian puts out report claiming India ordered killings of terrorists in Pakistan. Is the British media pushing the Pak narrative now? The Kerala story back in focus as the left and the Congress object to Doordarshan's move to broadcast the movie. Did did Sonia Gandhi? I don't speak to Republic. Mr. Robert Bata. Mr. Robert Bata. Mr. Robert Bata. Robert Vadra ducks and dodges republic specific questions from frame to frame to frame. Big development in the liquor gate investigation the CBI gets permission to question K Kavita sources say Kejriwal could be next. A massive win for forces in Uri as the army foils the infiltration bid one terrorist neutralized search and cordon operation is underway. We're just weeks away from the Lok Sabha elections, and today the Vadra Congress releases its manifesto, which is a copy-paste, more or less a copy-paste version of the 2019 one. But this manifesto has many problems. For one, it says that caste and religion should be one of the factors in choosing India's highest judges. Do you agree with that? Is that what we want in 2024? Let's debate. The Congress has released its 48-page poll manifesto, a slew of promises, some repackaged, some that shock, and some which mismatch. The Congress, in its manifesto, mostly a rehashed one from 2019, has made regressive promises. It calls progressive, from carrying out a pan-India caste census to bringing back personal laws. Let us tell you what doesn't add up. The Congress has released its 48-page manifesto, which it calls uh, the Nyai Patra, and in in the Nyai Patra, it has guaranteed uh, a lot of schemes. You will find that the Congress has set a minimum wage of 400 rupees per day for a daily wage worker, which translates to about 1 lakh 44 thousand rupees a year. So this is an anomaly because who would apply for an apprenticeship if a daily wage worker is getting paid more than him? Now the judiciary. 
The Congress promises more women, OBCs and minorities to the High Courts and Supreme Court. The question is, why bring quota over merit system even in judiciary? Let's talk about federalism. Rahul's manifesto says, with consensus, transfer of fields from list 3 to list 2. Is this an attempt to weaken the powers of the central government? The list goes on and has invited a political blowback. दूसरी पार्टियों की तरह भाजपा केवल घोषणा पत्र नहीं जारी करती हम तो संकल्प पत्र लेकर के आते 2019 में हमने जो संकल्प पत्र जारी किया था उसके ज्यादातर संकल्प पूरे हो चुके मोदी ने आपको जो वादा किया था वो वादा पूरा करने के लिए एड़ी चोटी का जोर लगा दिया है जो कांग्रेस की फितरत रही है आदत रही है शरारत रही है उसी के अनुरूप उन्होंने एक बार फिर भ्रम पैदा करने के लिए ही इस प्रकार का मैनिफेस्टो दिया है जिसमें से एक भी चीज ना उन्होंने केंद्र में रहते हुए कभी पूरी की ना राज्य सरकारों में रहते हुए पूरी की इज दिस अ मैनिफेस्टो दैट इंडिया विल एक्सेप्ट लेट्स डिबेट Viewers, let me make my position clear. I am completely appalled at the Congress Party manifesto, and I'll tell you why. If you agree or disagree with with me, I am appalled. I am aghast. I am shocked. I am horrified at this manifesto, and I'll run an active poll. If you want to say that you more of you disagree with me, you can say so. Do you agree with me or disagree with me? I am horrified at the Congress manifesto. Fundamentally, the first point of disagreement I have with the Congress Party manifesto. Can you hear me, Mr. Merotra? Loud and clear, sir. Loud and clear. Mr. Merotra, my first point of disagreement with the manifesto. Loud and clear. Thank you, thank you, sir. Is with the idea of an apprenticeship. Now, I know it's a well meaning idea saying that if you're an educated graduate Indian, whatever, you don't have a job, we'll give you an apprenticeship, we'll throw 1 lakh rupees a year at you. 1 lakh rupees a year, roughly about 8,000 rupees a month, less than the minimum wage. Indians need jobs. This is a halfway house in my, my view. It's not a promise of a job. It's not the promise of employment or increased employment. employment. The Congress party is saying we will increase the number of internships and apprenticeships. And we'll work with the private sector to create them. I don't think this helps Mr. Merotra. It's a halfway house, don't you think? Sir, the youth unemployment rate for 20 to 24 year olds currently is 44 percent this is not meant for the children of english speaking parents this is meant for the vast majority of our children of our uh, young who are finishing a one-year two-year diploma everyone here is a graduate this is not meant for post graduates this is meant for those who have a one-year certificate a two-year diploma or three-year degree and they will have a pathway to work. The vast majority in this country do not get a job for more than five to six thousand per month. I work on this data, so I'm afraid I'm aware of this a little bit more. This is not for your English speaking children. This is for the vast majority. And this will provide a guarantee which is already there in the 1961 Act, but has not been implemented by governments. And therefore, yes, sir, of course, Mr. Basu, you will have your chance. So let the others speak. I'm not, a, I'm not a, intending to speak when you are about to speak. Okay. In a, con in a country where there is 44% unemployment, you are unlikely for 20 to 24 year olds, they, they, and in a country which is not generating jobs. So you may, they need jobs, yes, but they are, the government's policies have not generated jobs. We have had the highest unemployment rate prior to COVID in 2017-18 of 18% youth unemployment, which has actually only gone on increasing with all due respect. So 
you, you probably don't know this, but 62% of those who are in the workforce today actually earn less than 200 rupees a day. That's the wage rate in this country. This is what the PLFS, the Periodic Labor Force Survey data is telling you. So if you're not aware of the facts, there is nothing do, I can do to help you. Now, obviously, the English speaking air conditioned lifestyle balas will not understand this. That's the problem. Okay, I'll get PK to respond with a with a two line input from my side. Uh, with with respect, Mr. Merotra, I take offense to your uh, assumption that people who don't speak English should learn should earn less than people who speak English. India has changed, <laughs> Dr. Merotra. That's, a re and that's India's that's reality, or no? A fair assessment. That's, a, that's India's reality. It, it may be, but the second it's, it's not the reality anymore. It may have been the reality in the Doon school days. Now, the daily minimum wage in India is 5,340. Or it can also be seen as 400 rupees a day. To say we'll give less than that. is I don't think it would be attractive to young no, Indians. Report, but I leave it to Dr. Basu to respond to you. Uh, Arnab, your reporter completely misunderstood. Manrega is available only for a hundred days, so no one in there, no one is even allowed to earn one one point four four lakh in a year on four hundred rupees a day. It's not even yes. humanly possible because the law doesn't permit it. <laughs> I let P I'll get P K Basu respond to you. I think India is very aspirational, and therefore I believe one lakh rupees a year will not be attractive or acceptable to most. Uh, yeah. Doctor yeah. Basu. I, you know, I think uh, Professor Merotra is living in an India that is uh, long past. Uh, oh, really? So one lakh rupees a year. Uh, domestic servants, even in Kolkata, earn more than that. So uh, I don't think that you know, an aspirational Indian will be looking for a one lakh rupees a year job as an apprentice, apprentice. or as, as an intern. Uh, now, with regard to your data on so-called youth unemployment, uh, this is based on CMIE. Nobody with any sense, no, there is no credibility with the CMIE data. CMIE uses a survey, uh, and their survey methods are extremely weak. Uh, oh, really? and it, it, so they don't even have a proper measure of the labor force. How can they measure oh, really? unemployment? So oh, really? uh, PLFS and other surveys have proper estimates of the unemployment rate, which is around 6 to 7%, which is much more credible the fastest growing economy in on the, the world. apprenticeship point please. now you see the point about the indian labor market is that the vast majority of indians uh, work in what are what are called own and owned enterprises enterprises that they that they run themselves so most of india is in fact entrepreneurial now uh, <laughs> among those who have jobs now if you if you just just look at the at the structure of the labor market the structure of the labor market has changed substantially from what Professor Merotra remembers from his youth. Uh, and at the moment, a lack of rupees is not anything that, you know, lack of rupees in a full year, not the, the sort of wage that would, uh, that would attract any aspirational end. Okay, so we've, got, we've got two sides. I can see strong disagreements here. I, I wish to bring in Tuhin and Kapil Madan on the apprenticeship issue. Uh, there are two ways. What I heard Dr. Merotra begin by saying is that since unemployment is a real issue and I don't deny that it is, something is better than nothing. To which my point was that this isn't even something. To which a third point can be Kapil, you, I want you in the debate and then Tuhin. That this could be a very, very convenient scheme to churn a lot of cheap labor in the country. Therefore, in the name of an ex apprenticeship, this could be seen to be an extremely exploitative situation. And since you say all diploma holders and graduates would avail of an apprenticeship, it could end up reducing the entry level salary for most jobs. I mean, why would people give anyone? 25 or 30,000 rupees a month 
when you can get an apprentice at 8,000 rupees a month. Hence, bringing down the benchmark and creating a lot of cheap labor in the country, which may not be in the interest of the social indicators for the country or the economic indicators of most people. Uh, Kapil. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Yes, Anam, I think you've got it. Can you unmute wrong. yourself? I can, tell you, I can tell you from the legal industry also and you know people from the media that I know that when people hire mostly uh, uh, interns in the legal industry, they are not paid. They have to, you know, fend for themselves. Okay. And that's that's a reality in the country. The same thing happens in the media also when, you know, uh, the kids who are studying or who have just you know, uh, uh, came out, they want to have an experience. If an intern is, uh, which we in legal uh, industry, we call interns and somewhere it is called apprenticeship, they are not paid. There is no system that regulates what would be their term of employment. It is a void which is there in your industry also. And I can tell you it is there in the legal industry also. And no, to I read... Mean. And and to read and say, okay, can you then say every person in the media who comes, you know, for an internship, is he paid or is he not paid? You please answer this. You please answer this, and I will open up opinion poll on this. Okay, whether want, media I can I can speak for or not. I can I can I can you, you, I you can say yes or no. I can, then I will I can speak. I, I can my speak own for. Poll. I will run my own. Yeah, but I'll speak. Can you stop media? raising your decibel? No, I'm responding to you. I'm trying to make. I'm no, responding to you. It's an important you. issue. It's I, I don't issue. do these 8,000 uh, rupee internship, so, a, a, apprenticeships. So, so, it's exploited. Okay, yes, that's the problem because reply. people people yeah. don't pay at all. People don't pay at but all. But you want to implement it on a national level. You no, want to implement it across what, sectors, what across logic, jobs, across industries. You want to make all young people apprenticeships. A, let me ask no, you, let me ask no, you, would a member of the Vadra Gandhi family accept a 8,000 rupee internship? No, would a member of the Chidambaram you, family you, accept you, a 8,000 rupee think, internship? Think, Why does that clock, question hurt? I, I, I think would they? Uh, and to which Mr. Merotra will say, no, no, you're English speaking, you can't accept it. But non-English speaking should accept it. I think the only uh, the only escape and the, the drift you have is, you know, to give an illogical, you know, uh, situation and bring any random person in the debate. We are but debating Anna, a single issue. You, know, you can is, say okay. yes or no. Couple. Whether in media, whether in media industry specifically, do you know that there are interns who Alex, work and you know, who don't get paid. I come from legal industry and I can say with confidence, I can say... I run one media organization. I don't run all. You, if others no, are doing it, say? I don't agree no, with it. No. End of now, story. No. Now the I, point Congress is, wants no, to implement no, it nationally. No, I disagree I with you also. I am, you're looking at a back foot because you don't want to answer this question because you know for a fact that in media industry also... No, I've never in my life been on a back foot. I'm very straight. No, you are on a back foot. I'm telling you, you are creating... You are, okay, creating, you, yes no? you are creating bucket fulls industry, of cheap no. labor in the country no? and I don't think why it will work. Yes no? Chalo, you take a... Yes, okay, straight. tomorrow let's, morning let's I want any Congress it. leader to you, go to any know, part of the country and tell young let's, Indians, let's, let's we will make you work, we will make Anna, you work a full day, a full week, a full month and a full year and pay one lakh rupees. Annab, you have great... You try and say that to anyone. They'll tell you which world are you living in. You just open and you run a poll. Okay, we do a live poll right now. I accept the challenge. Okay, ask, okay, live poll. Ask, now don't speak. Ask, live poll yes, question ask, on the screen. Ask, Congress, the Congress, question. Congress ask, offer of 8,000 rupee industry. apprenticeship. The media industry. Fair or unfair? Doing That's right. Congress paid. offer of 8,000 rupee no. apprenticeship for qualified I Indians. Have, uh, Fair or unfair? I am saying, I am Fair or unfair? Will Indians, will qualified Indians accept 8,000 rupee apprenticeship? Yes or no? Do it is on the debate. Do it. The manifesto debate. Arnab, the Congress party very clearly. On the debate. Arnab, very clearly the Congress party has a regressive economic, very clearly the Congress party has a regressive economic outlook and it wants to incentivize and encourage sweatshops in the country over... Strategic industries like the semiconductor. The Congress party is regressive. I don't need to reiterate this, but if I may just expand, you know, because I was shocked with a number, with many, many things in, in, in this manifesto. You know, basically, it's a mischievous manifesto with a clear twofold agenda. One is to unleash financial anarchy in the country, and two is to foment and foster caste divides across the, the society. And I can expand each of the, these points to you. You know, when it comes to financial f fiscal profligacy, I mean, they are promising one lakh per poor woman in this country. This added with their other unrealistic promise of 
legal guarantee for MSP would amount to an expenditure of 15 lakh crore per year, which would roughly mean one third of the budget expenditure. When they make such promises, they, it is incumbent upon them to explain where would they get the funds for. for Look at the number of times they've reiterated the freedom of choice for personal laws. When they mention this, they need to specify, are they going to revoke the Triple Talaq Act? They need to specify, are they going to encourage polygamy? You move from, Number point, to three. Point. You move from point to point. You you say you disagree from with the MSP. The, debate uh, for the legal guarantee simply because it is You disagree with the idea or you say it cannot... You say it cannot... Where are they no, getting no, the you, you Then you get into a debate with Mr. Dr. Merotra. You tell him and watch... Dr. Merotra, one minute. He says, he has used the word fiscal profligacy. He is not against the idea, but he thinks it is economically sustainable, will drain the country's resources, and therefore is a pipe dream. You make your point to him in 20 seconds, I'll get him to respond. You explain so, why so, on MSP. When you, when, you, when you promise things which on the face of it would incur 15 lakh crores of additional expenditure in the budget, which roughly amounts to one third of the current budget uh, expenditure, you need to also explain where are you going to get okay, these resources okay. from. Because your track record in the three states that you're governing right now isn't great. You have faulted on the promises you He's made in Himachal Pradesh. Responding. Yeah, go on. Go on. So where is this 15 lakh crore number coming from? I don't know. Point one, point two. For a party, because I understand this gentleman is uh, from the BJP. For a party which started in 2014 with a 55 lakh crore total debt is now at 2 lakh, 200 lakh crore. In terms of GDP, it started at around 58% of GDP. Sir, uh, the in debt terms to of our debt to GDP ratio, ratio sir, it has been way better than the US, Japan and many other sir, countries. So as an economist, you, know, you should know that more than, more than the debt, it, it is the debt to GDP no, ratio no, which matters. Okay, calm down him. I was not speaking when you were speaking. Have the decency to listen to me. I could not even complete my second sentence. So you, a government which started at 58% of GDP is now standing at 81% of GDP in terms of debt. Is a, It's a bit rich for a spokesperson from that party to be telling the Congress, in any case, where is this 15,000 crore number coming from? PK what is this 15,000 crore? PK where did he find it in PK. the manifesto? <laughs> Okay, let me just quickly respond on, you know, with regard to the fiscal profligacy, uh, let's just understand that, first of all, inflation during the, uh, during the last five years of UPA was 10% a year every single year, and there were twin deficits. The current account deficit reached 5% of GDP in FY 2013. The fiscal deficit was running at close to 6% of GDP at a time when the world economy was booming. Now, those are twin deficits. And by comparison, right now, the, the current account deficit is less than 1% of GDP. The fiscal deficit is on a path towards 4.5% of GDP. That is what fiscal responsibility is about. And it's a vast difference. Now, if you just look at the period... Even under the, the Narasimha Rao government, inflation was extremely high. The banking system was bust. So the Congress has a record of, uh, of destroying the banking system. They did it twice. Uh, in 1994 95 there was already uh, a, a serious banking crisis. When they left government in 2014, there was the worst uh, crisis in our, uh, in our financial system what is called the twin balance sheet crisis. Banks were bust. Uh, the, the private sector uh, was unable to borrow because they, their balance sheets were a, a complete mess. So uh, it, it's rich, I think, for uh, somebody supporting the Congress to get away from this reality. This is the reality. Now, if you just also just concentrate a bit on what has happened in Karnataka or, yeah. or Himachal. Uh, Karnataka uh, I, began to run out of money I, within six months of, of the government coming in. Uh, 
because they had a whole slew of uh, of freebies that they could not fund. Okay, so we have two so, perspectives. So we I, have I, this. I got, I got your view. People are voting. I'll put the vote out. I put the poll out. Ladies and gentlemen, one point I want to mention before I move on, and this will be interesting, Abhishek and Ishkaran, as we get in. The word minorities is used 13 times in the Congress manifesto. Whereas there is not a single mention of the word majority or the word Hindu, but minorities is referred to 13 times. I'm not passing judgment. It's their choice. They want to keep referring to minorities. The word majority is mentioned once, but in the context of the word majoritarianism. So majority is bad. Majority people are majoritarian. Similarly, the word majority is used in the terms brute majority of the BJP in parliament. Quote, majoritarianism has taken over. And, quote, no place for majoritarianism. I'm not saying they're anti-Hindu. But it is interesting, viewers, this is the way the Congress chooses it. My problem and specifically, now, Ishkaran, and this is the burning issue of the day. They yeah. say that when choosing judges to the High Court and Supreme Court, you must look at whether they are from minority or not from minority. Whether they are from this caste or that caste. I uh, say this is the limit. Yeah. This yes. is the limit. Arna, you yes, will yes, now yes. say, are you a Muslim? Are you not a Muslim? Not if limit. you are a Muslim, I'll give you preference to the Supreme Court. It's not the limit. What is going on here? What does the Congress party Arna, want? Yeah. Who is influencing them? Which party and of the, which of their allies? Left? IUML? Who? Yes, please. Ishkaran on this hot Arna, part of the debate. Ishkaran. Yes. yes. Arnab, why are you surprised when the sitting Prime Minister of India said minorities and Muslims specifically he was talking about have the first right on resources of this nation? Why are you surprised? A party which wanted to bring communal violence bill. I shudder as a lawyer to think what would have happened if that bill would have come into place. Every person belonging to majority community would have been presumed guilty for any riot which happened in this country, any crime which happened in this country between two different religions, the majority community would have been by default the guilty party. That was the mindset. And why are you surprised by that? They are masters in dog whistle. Do you remember how secularism was inserted in the constitution? A very decent sounding word, but which had been rejected wait on, wait because on. our nation has always been secular. When you deliberately insert that view or that word, it is to target a specific vote bank. When you do not want to contest an Amethi and you believe your vote bank lies in Vyanath, of course your laws, your manifestos will reflect on that. When you talk about their talking points, the code words are not only minority, personal law, personal law, when they know a triple hey, talaq debate sense. has happened, where this government has given the basic right to a woman that you will not hear talaq, talaq, talaq and be thrown on the road, where this Supreme Court gave basic right hey, of maintenance to Shah Bano, they came and they overturned that Shah Bano law, so a Muslim woman should not deserve a basic maintenance. They are the people who are supported Article 370. They talk about reservation. You read about what was happening in really Article 370 to SC, ST and women, but they will not talk about it. Yours, so the view is very clear. All the times they read views yours, this to minority many, or secular, no, no, it is a direct target to a particular. One second. This is every not time right. the word minority is I'm, used, I'm sure it's that a code word I'm, to say what laws we will frame when we come into a power. And those laws appears as if the drafting every, was done too by much. Tomorrow, Muslim personal but, but law Ishkaran, board. It is all but, but Ishkaran, tomorrow you will say... Tomorrow, tomorrow you will say, to, no, no, tomorrow the Congress party will also say that when you are deciding who is going to be the general officer commander in chief of the Eastern Command or the Eastern Air Command, which air marshal or which general will take over, they will say we should see whether they are from this caste or whether they are Muslim or not. This is, I mean, the limit of wokeness. It's, it's <coughs> political stupidity. It's political harakari and viewers, I am not making it up. I it's read point number enough. five. More women it's and persons wokeness. from SC, ST, OBC and the minority community and the minority community will now be appointed as judges in high courts and supreme court. I know that Justice Chandrachur cannot speak because he's in an office but I'm sure he will be totally appalled at these kind of suggestions. Reservations tomorrow there's a chief justice of India on the basis of Can which religion you are from. 
which is an assumption that if you are not from a minority community. community, you will be unfair. It will be a disincentive for people who are not from the minority community or from SCST community to even enter the judicial services because they will say we never have a right. Waha pe bhi reservation ho jayega. Kal army mein hoga, air force mein hoga, paramilitary mein hoga. See, everywhere it's going to be only reservations. This is craziness. Ten seconds. Are not you know, I, 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 do you want to add a point to this because Abhishek has not spoken? Uh, when it, it is, they, they are equally this mischievous when it comes to Manipur. They have used no, no, the word. No, no, I go to Manipur. Yeah. This one is sure. too big. You know. sure. This one is big. Do you agree with me, viewers? I, I disagree with this idea. Abhishek. Yeah, Mr. Goswami, I'm speaking last. I want to make a nuanced point. Representation. Representation is important. You have Justice Gawai who is in line to become Chief Justice of India in 2025. Justice Gawai was speaking at a conference in the United States last week and he said that I was elevated two years before I should actually have been elevated to the Supreme Court. But I was elevated <coughs> because it was felt that Dalit representation is important. Justice Gawai is a Dalit. And Justice Gawai, Gawai in 2025 will become just the second Dalit Chief Justice in the 75-year illustrious history of the Supreme Court after K.G. Balakrishnan became Chief Justice in 2009. Now you have Justice Nagaratna, who in 2027 will become the first female Chief Justice of India. 77 years we would have had to wait to get a member from 50% of the population to become the Chief Justice. Representation is important, Mr. Goswami. Chief Justice Chandrachut's father was Chief Justice. Justice Kanna's uncle H.R. Kanna was the famous judge who went against Indira Gandhi during the emergency. Justice Gawai's father was an associate of Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. Representation is important because when a Dalit or a woman or a member from this the minority so wrong, community, so we had great Muslim Chief so, Justice. So Chief grossly Justice unfair, we've had Chief so Justice. prejudiced, please allow so me malicious, speak, so sir. vexatious, can you so please narrow minded, allow me to so speak? political. Can you please you allow something. me to finish uh, my Abhishek. point? Abhishek. Abhishek, okay, I'll, I'll come in with a point here tonight. I'll come, I will completely allow you to finish no, your point, but since I have a point to make to you. No, you please allow me please, to speak and give me please, 30 seconds. Please, yeah, you may I've not be interested in listening, minutes. that's your you choice. My time. But I am I interested in speaking, so I will I will force you right now no, to listen to me. No, please give me 35 Abhishek, you give me another 30 seconds. The law is blind to race. I have listened patiently to everybody. The law is blind to race, to religion, to caste, to creed, to gender. Those who are deciding on matters of what is just or unjust should not be seen on the basis of their caste or religion. Representation for a judge makes no voice. sense. You know, the the entire point you just that don't he want is only speak. and only a man or woman protecting justness. No, you have to, if you cannot contradict my point, then you, I, it's, it's, it, can I, you give I me 30 you, seconds to finish my point? It, but Abhishek, you got I didn't understand. even make this my is a very point. very serious matter. My point People is are with me, this. not you. When a chief justice yeah, is a Dalit point will or be a made Muslim after about three or comes from a community that has not had representation in the judiciary, they bring their lived experience to the bench. They bring their lived experience to the bench. That is important yeah. because those who come before the law, those who suffer the okay. consequences of the law are often marginalized. So it is important to have people from those very same marginalized communities okay. dispensing justice. Right? Justice is not dispensed in a vacuum. How much? Human how, beings what percentage would you like? Their caste, okay, what their creed, their religion, okay, lived what, experience what percentage? has a bearing next question on their decisions. Thank Whether you. you like I understood your hackneyed not. lived experience I'm argument. Done. My point is, my point is, my question is, Ishkaran, what would you like? Would you want, how much percentage should be kept for Muslims, your for example? Yeah among uh, higher judiciary. How, what percentage, Ishkaran, of Supreme Court judges must be Muslim? Arnav, first you can't just say we, we would like more Muslims. System. Tell me how much. 5%, 2%, 25% or 80%? Arnav, I think the Congress manifesto does not even understand the system of appointment of judges in this nation. It is through the collegium system. The judges are appointing judges themselves. They are cognizant of the ground reality. They know it is the collegium system which has led to Justice Gawai also becoming the Chief Justice of India. So firstly, the Congress needs to be clear what is the system of appointment in this country. The judges to say that there is not adequate representation to any segment. You are casting as persons on the appointment system which is led by the collegium. That is the law of the land. I do not know who writes all this. There are adequate lawyers in Congress. The government is not appointing anybody. The collegium system, Justice Nagarathan is going to become the first chief justice as the example was given. Point, Very good. There should be more women judges. There should be every no, representation no, they are, they are there. Congress but is the appointment planning some is funny things. 
It's not the government. No, I'll tell you some things, some things which are being planned. And I, I went through this and I said before my show tonight, I said to everyone, there are some things they are trying to do by stealth and they say, no, you are seeing a conspiracy where none exists. And I said, no, no, I'm absolutely sure. For example, point number eight, they are saying we will encourage reform of personal laws. But, but such reform must be undertaken only with the participation and the consent of the communities concerned. Meaning, the All India Muslim Personal Law Board does not allow triple talaq to be abolished. So maybe they are talking about the restoration of triple talaq. Yes, absolutely. That's a way of saying, bring us back, we'll bring back triple talaq. Now, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think? I think, I think the important triple talaq is coming back according But also they need to specify to what extent they will support the Sharia tomorrow. Because like, you know, this con Congress yes. party, like you mentioned, the only time they have mentioned the majority community is in the context of major majority. No, the triple talaq point, I want them to clarify. When they are saying restoration, revival, bringing back in consultation. It's very obvious, they, what, do, what is the Congress Party stand on triple talaq? So, yeah, will they no, bring the UCC? The Congress Party will the BJP to to bring the, the UCC? Era where the, the, the Prime Minister appointed all the judges. I mean, you know, what is the idea of, of, the, of a party saying how judges should be appointed? Judges are appointed by a collegium, not by, not by a political party. So why is the party talking about this? It's absurd. Oh, it, really? It, a, judges from, are appointed uh, by a collegium. Uh, uh, the government of India a, has routinely a, stalled the appointment of judges who don't agree with the ruling government. party. That's one. Second thing is that you talked about M.H. Bey being, being a great chief justice. Who was stalled M. H. Because Bey he does not agree became with chief the justice of the primarily party. because he had voted with Indira Gandhi. He had voted with Indira Gandhi. That was the era when... Uh, when judges were Listen, appointed, sir, I think you should stick to economics. How loyal they were seen to the to Congress. Economics. HR Khanna the all, was the only one who was not. recommended names and repeatedly, the repeatedly, the government has rejected those no, 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 I, The government I, the has refused made, to issue the, a presidential the, the, warrant. The, the, frightfully, the government has refused to issue a presidential warrant the, for the appointment the, of the judges. The frightfully pedestrian Gopal appointment was Abhishek, Abhishek. Several high court judges have been vetoed. Your very, your very shallow and pedestrian argument was recommended for elevation to the Karnataka High Court. His let appointment me, was stalled me, by the BJP. Yeah, he's, ra he's ratified a few things he's got to say it. You know, he's like this so student of... He's, 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 he's like a student who's memorized some tutes. Yeah, he's got I'm to repeat not interested it. in you your insults. You understand. You come up you're, with you know, a half-insults, insults insults hackneyed getting getting argument. Your insults now, now, are getting whatever you may be interested. Now, you need yeah, to, okay. People need to watch me hitting yeah, yeah. you nice and hard. Yeah, the, yeah. If the question is, if the judges come with no empathy of lived experience, then they cannot deliver justice. Uh, uh, Kapil, Kapil, yes. please tell him. Kapil, Don't Kapil, please tell him. Kapil, Kapil, please tell him who decided the Shabano case. It was a bench with because Justice Chandrachur, yes. Ranganath Mishra, D. A. Desai, yes. Chinappa Reddy, and E. S. Venkatramaya. And this bench. man comes and says, "If you don't have a lived experience, hmm. then then you yeah, that means a silly and stupid argument." I really oppose this reservation on the name of religion and these caste in higher judiciary. Now you wanted to talk. Now, now you wanted to talk Kapil. about. Constitution. Yes, now you want to talk about constitution. It is the same government when you know the Supreme Court, you know, passed a judgment wherein he, the Supreme Court pronounced that you know one of the member from the judiciary will be there uh, for the appointment of election commissioner. What did the government do? They came up with a law and they basically overcame that judgment. When the Delhi and versus the state uh, uh, dispute, the judgment came. Again, a bill was you know, passed, uh, 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 introduced. You know, those, you know, basically that was also done to overcome the judgment passed by the Honorable Supreme Court. And, you know, day in and day out, you get judgments from the Supreme Court where the court come heavily on the government and say that the acts of the government are unconstitutional. We saw in the electoral bonds case we also saw when you know the government in maharashtra how uh, uh, how the sitting uh, governor exercises power illegally which the honorable supreme court has said so this is this is the government who should be last okay, in the to who should talk about constitution of india arnab the simple point is Iskaran empathy wants to counter you. briefly the two, and then two, i have an important yeah, arnab, two, and have two small points. Firstly, whether a certain power belongs to Delhi government or union does not affect the basic right of women, which was the maintenance right given by the Supreme Court and taken away by the Congress government. Whether the woman should have a right of triple talaq and be thrown on the street in modern India 
or she should have some legal protection. That is the right given by the government. And I am very sure Kapil is an excellent lawyer. He knows how judges are appointed in this country. If there is any imbalance or there is any need of any greater representation, the collegium is sufficient to do it because if the government starts appointing, then immediately you will have the question now, of independence of judiciary, governmental interference in appointments a, and judiciary, and a whole I different argument. I have a very important here. point, so, so I need at least five minutes to deal with it. For. I need allow at least five me, minutes to deal with it. I need five minutes to deal with it. I won't. Allow me. One minute, couple, couple, one minute. I need five minutes on my last point. I need five minutes on my last point, couple. 30, 30 seconds. I just want to respond to Ishkaran. I think Ishkaran is a very seasoned lawyer. He goes only to the constitutional court. There are other judicial, you know, uh, courts which are not the constitutional court, like lower judiciary, for which the appointments happen by giving examination. <laughs> and in Let those examinations, you have, you know, you still have the system of, you know, uh, uh, reservation. Few seats are reserved for exactly. you know, categories. So, yes, Ishkaran is right when he says that oh, the, the Congress manifesto that is talking about High Court judges, and Supreme Court judges, not court entry the level court. to the judicial not services. The <laughs> anyway, now, 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 <laughs> you have got your 30 seconds. Now, let me move to my main point. The main point, the main point. No, no, don't continue. The main point. This is a very important point. I have always believed. I have always believed and today I have no doubt. I believe there is an agenda why the Congress party says that India is not a nation. We have heard them say this not once, not twice. We have seen this repeated assertion by this party and then when I call them anti-national, they say, how dare you? But their supreme leader and all their leaders, you know PK, you had the unfortunate experience of meeting him in once in Singapore and he says India is not a nation. It is some kind of a negotiation between states, some, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Now in their manifesto, they say, we will review the distribution of legislative fields in the seventh schedule of the constitution. And we will build a consensus on transferring many or some of these fields from the list 2, which is the concurrent list, to list 2, list 3, the concurrent list, to the state list. Now, my point is, why do you want to have an exercise of consensus when you have already decided that you will weaken the concurrent list, reduce the powers of the central government, and manifold increase the powers of the state government, even Santosh Merotra, Though he would want to support the Congress in this, let me ask him. So I, Mr. Mehrotra, do I, I, we I, want to transfer subjects like bankruptcy, in, insolvency, and major aspects of criminal law entirely to the state list? I do we realize the, the consequences of this? Criminal law excuse is the state and police. Excuse me, Arnav. State. Excuse me, you asked me a question, may I answer? Hey, police, so the, police is already in the state list. I think so your research are not. Okay, let 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 let, let, let Dr. Merotra have a go first, please. Yeah, so it's very straightforward. I don't think the manifesto says which parts will be transferred from the concurrent to the state list. I think the larger point is much more important, which all your viewers need to understand. This country needed 75 years ago to have a very centralized constitution and a centralized system of governance. Oh, we it would interest you to know that, you that, that it, it would interest you to know that while we are the democracy, we are the federation and China is has a unitary constitution and they have a one party state, they are much more fiscally decentralized than we are. There's something wrong there. And all the literature about Chinese economic growth is actually tracing its economic growth back to its fiscal decentralization. We are a large country. We are a much more diverse country. We have no choice but to actually put in place a much deeper fiscal decentralization. And therefore, that's the spirit that is inherent. You're contradicting in that yourself. Response. You've just that contradicted yourself, uh, Dr. Merotra. May I, may, I, may, I, may, I, may, I, may I come in and ask you a counter? Just, One minute. Please, no, but you've please, contradicted please, yourself please, and let me explain why. I have you have begun your point I by saying... Point. Uh, I allow not. me. <laughs> I, allow, I, 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 I'm, I'm absolutely sure and the viewers are sure you have, but let me tell you why. Because in the heat Go of ahead. the moment, you began by saying, how do you know, Arnab, which items of list 3 concurrent list will be taken? You followed it up by saying that fiscal... Redistribution is what is required. If it is fiscal and not criminal procedure, not preventive detention, 
not marriage and divorce, not actionable wrongs. And if it is things like bankruptcy, insolvency, trust, trustees, if it is things like uh, economic and social planning, trade unions, labor disputes, social security, these are the fiscal matters. So you already said it that we want to take the fiscal matters away. And I, my argument is, if in this great country of ours, Dr. Merotra, you take away and reduce the fiscal control of the center, you are basically making a terrible argument for a weak center. And I do oh, not, not see, all, I do not oh, see not this all, argument sir. as a conceivable not argument all, for any yes, person watching my program it today. Be, yes, sir. Let, let no, let reply, let reply. Truth. It's not gospel truth because Arnab Goswami has said it. The fact of the matter is there is a vast body of literature in the whole world which has demonstrated that as, as countries become richer, they become more fiscally decentralized. So let's rest assured. Well, I say, I don't care what literature exists. I say, I say, Dr. Merotra, we need to be a stronger nation, not a weaker nation, or not a nation as you would like it to be. What's it? P.K. Basu wants to have a go at you on this one. P.K. Basu. Oh, please don't teach me. Don't teach me. That's why I don't like coming on your show. No, no, no. There's a very... The, the, you go, the problem is, you have this unilateral point, approach, Dr. Merotra, whether you like to come on my show or not, please, history will record please, the fact please, that my arguments please, tonight please, have left you completely incapable of responding. Up, up, the is answer is on the other side. Yes, there please. There is good riddance from him. Just one second. There are two, before the show ends, there are two very mischievous points which you have left out. Oh, this which concurrent let me enlighten. List is a big one. Let me, you know, when it comes to decentralization, it needs to be seen in a larger perspective. And therefore, before the show ends, I want to tell you, you know, I want to remind the viewers also, look at what they have written in the context of Manipur. They are emphasizing administrative settlement without ev you know, ever mentioning territorial integrity of Manipur. Does that mean they are supporting cookie land? Okay, one you know, these are issues where the Congress needs to... The concurrent list issue which Dr. Merotra walked out on. So I think it's important to understand that... Unfortunate, throughout, unfortunate. Throughout, lack throughout of the time that Congress was in power, they were centralizing power. They were centralizing India on a fiscal basis. Uh, right through the time. Now, talk about China. The interesting thing is that Close China up. is quick you know, has a, a degree of fiscal decentralization, but uh, their their uh, the GST, the value added tax, is completely central. And as we can see, China is a completely centrally controlled the, the point, state. The point throughout being history. See, we have what, what, years we, of what, what we've done is if we've gone we've like gone we've States, gone a little bit it is too deep, perhaps. We upset so people, but I tell you, but I tell you, PK, US income tax. PK, PK, I'm sorry to cut you short, but I'll say this tonight. When you go deep, when you sift below the surface and you see the intentions, you have the kind of debate we've had tonight. We've had a great response and I stand by every word I said. We need a stronger center, not a weaker center. These are dangerous things. They should not be tolerated. I'll see you on the other side, viewers on debate two and three on what is proving to be quite a hot show. Amity has been ranked India's number one private university for the 11th year by India Today, a testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. कांग्रेस को जब से कर्नाटक में मौका मिला है तो इन्होंने कर्नाटक को अपना एटीएम बना दिया है यहां पे नहीं दिल्ली में होगी यही है उनकी पॉलिटिकल कंपल्शन यही है उनकी पॉलिटिकल स्ट्रेटेजी मानना है कि कल कांग्रेस पार्टी के नामांकन रैली में मुस्लिम लीग के फ्लैग्स को छुपाना इस बात का संकेत है कि या तो राहुल गांधी मुस्लिम लीग के समर्थन से शर्मसार हैं या फिर जब वो उत्तर भारत में आएंगे और मंदिर मंदिर जाएंगे
सब लोगों से उत्तर भारत में मुस्लिम लीग के साथ उनके गठबंधन को छुपा पाएंगे मैं केरला आकर और विशेषता वायनाड आकर देखकर ये स्तब्ध हो गई हूं आश्चर्यचकित हूं कि पीएफआई जैसी आतंकवादी संगठन के बैन के बावजूद पीएफआई के पॉलिटिकल लीडरशिप से राहुल गांधी समर्थन अपने चुनाव के लिए ले रहे हैं आज नॉमिनेशन में हम सब जानते हैं कि एक प्रत्याशी को एक कैंडिडेट को ओ तो रिलीजियंस टू द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन लेने की दरकार पड़ती है तो राहुल गांधी संविधान के प्रति अपने ओत को झुटला चुके हैं जब उन्होंने पीएफआई की पॉलिटिकल लीडरशिप से समर्थन अपने चुनाव के लिए लिया वेल देर इज अगिंग इन डेली एंड अ बेगिंग इन केरला विच नीड्स टू बी एक्सप्लेन वाई इज इट दैट वेन दी अलायंस पार्टनर्स कम टूगेदर फॉर अ रैली इन द नेशनल कैपिटल दे सीम्स टू बी नो एनिमोसिटी बट वेन इट कम्स टू द सीट ऑफ वायनाड देर इज दिस फॉर competition that is taking place that rahul gandhi that creates animosity against sanatan dharma when he does politics in the south of india why then does he go to every temple of repute in the north of india when he wants to fight an election Amity has been ranked India's number 1 private university for the 11th year by India Today, a testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students.
Rahul Gandhi's rally in Vyanar post filing his nomination. A new row as Congress and From the Delhi studios of Republic TV, it's time for Arnab Goswami on the debate. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for the nation's sharpest opinion. A British newspaper called The Guardian seems to be scrambling for relevance. And in the bid to keep its 1821 era newspaper relevant in 2024, they seem to have banked on the accounts of the ISI. Single source journalism, ladies and gentlemen, this Western media propaganda laden today with the woke brigade, these has beens who have gone unchallenged intellectually for decades need to be countered. This typical narrative building ahead of every general election in India is getting too predictable. But this time, The Guardian has used an ISI script, ISI source, to say that the Indian government has ordered the killing of terrorists in Pakistan. How sympathetic they are to terrorists. They always have been. They have quoted Pakistani investigators without question. Or an ounce of journalistic corroboration, objectivity or proof. They call themselves journalists to be regurgitating the propaganda of the ISI, the same ISI whose hand was in 2611 killing 166 people in Mumbai. This is like the Guardian saying, the Al-Qaeda has told us something. The same ISI who is linked by Mossad to have a hand in the killing of Jews and Israelis. The same ISI which is responsible for being the bridge and forging the lashkar e toiba the jaish e Mohammed, and the Taliban alliance. If terror operators, their middlemen, their advisors and supervisors are now seen by papers like The Guardian as credible sources, then I think it's about time, really, that they are solidly countered. And I have said this before and I will say it again. The hegemony of this Western media will be countered by the voice and power of a billion. And the propaganda of those like The Guardian more than anything else, in my view, is the biggest glaring message that the time has come to do it. And ladies and gentlemen, my promise is that Republic will do it at a very large scale very, very soon. For tonight, we counter Pakistan's narrative that they propagated through the woke brigade of the West. It's time we smash that narrative and set the record straight. So let's debate. The Western media propaganda on India is back in focus once again. And this time, it's The Guardian. It's alleged a report claiming that Indian government ordered killings on Pakistani soil. The basis, they claim to have interviews with Pakistani investigators and documents they claim shared by the Pakistanis. A hit job at best. India has responded to the report as it should have, calling out the false and malicious propaganda. But this is not the first time an anti-India narrative is being peddled. From Trudeau's big Nijar killing allegation that triggered a massive India-Canada diplomatic row but was not met with any substance. It's extremely important that as a country with a strong and independent justice system, we allow those justice processes to unfold themselves with the utmost integrity. But I can assure you, the decision to uh, share these allegations on the floor of the House of Commons Monday morning was not done lightly. Uh, it was done with, or Monday afternoon, was done with uh, the utmost seriousness. To the plot to kill Pannu claim, a charge that still awaits proof. Matt, I don't really have any uh, anything new to sort of offer on this that uh, both Matt and the Secretary haven't spoke to um, 
already, I would say, in, in the number of, of times that has come up uh, before the press in, in the past week or so, I would just reiterate again, we are and continue to be deeply uh, concerned about the uh, allegations referenced by Prime Minister Trudeau, and we remain in regular contact with our Canadian partners, and it's critical that Canada's investigation proceed and uh, the perpetrators be brought to justice. We also have, um, as we've previously said, uh, publicly and privately urged the Indian government to cooperate uh, in the Canadian investigation and uh, uh, cooperate uh, in those efforts. India has made its stand clear. One, we told the Canadians that uh, this is not the government of India's policy. Two, we told the Canadians saying that, look, if you have something specific, if you have something relevant, you know, let us know. We are open to looking at it. Uh, do understand that there is an environment out there. So that is important in a way to, uh, to factor in. Then why is the British media banking on Pakistan ISI's tail on India? Let's debate. Uh, in a sense here, The Guardian is complaining about the killing of terrorists. The Guardian is loudly, loudly complaining in its obvious editorial stance that India is doing a very bad thing by killing terrorists. Okay. So what we find out, therefore, Sushant, is that tremendous sympathy that The Guardian has for terrorists, who in their view should be encouraged to live long lives, happy lives, uh, lives of fulfillment. Uh, the second point is that they are saying that all of this has been told to them by Pakistani government sources. They failed to establish, General Bakshi, that the Pakistani government officials are the ones who are building and financing the terrorists. They don't add that as a rider. They try to create a line of separation between the Pakistani government, the Pakistani intelligence agency, the Pakistani army, and the terrorist groups, which everybody knows does not exist. Okay, let's begin. I have with me tonight Faraz Saeed, political analyst from Pakistan, and Hamid Khan, uh, who's also joining us, analyst and journalist from Islamabad. Uh, what is this story? I mean, I'm very confused, Faraz. What is the point that is being made here? That India killed Pakistani terrorists. How bad? I mean, is that the point? You should be happy because you keep coming on my program and saying there is so much terrorism in Pakistan. So if you are killing a few of your terrorists, you should say thank you to us if we are. are you, is you should be thanking us for killing terrorists. You are complaining uh, about it. You decide Anna? what your line is. Yes, Hamid? Um, yes, Anna, it, is, it means that it is an admission that Indian raw is killing the people in different countries, whether it is Canada, England or anywhere else. And the Guardian report is very clear that Indian agency, RAW and other agencies are uh, extremely violating the international laws and they are killing the uh, people, uh, you know, on, as a state policy. And India is involved in the straight terrorism already and Kulboshan Yadev and then the killing of, uh, uh, you know, in Canada is all the big evidences. I mean, it is a time for you, uh, Arnab Goswami, General Bakshi and everybody to ask from your government the, yeah. that why they are doing so fascist open terrorism now. This is the question from Indian government to ask, not from me, know, not I, from anybody else. And this yeah, is not okay, a report. I'll, I'll let, this is not I'll a let, report from I'll, me. Anyway, I'll listen, this is listen. a report by Guardian, I'll, one of a very reliable uh, newspaper, one of a very uh, reliable, which you have mentioned in many programs. When Guardian says anything in your favor, you do 10 million programs on it. But when Guardian exposes Indian terrorism, when Guardian exposes that India is using, uh, you know, killing of uh, on the other soils as their tool, then you may, uh, then you uh, criticize uh, Guardian. That is yeah, not the right way. I want, I want, clear, I want, this listen is a to me, listen violation to me, listen to me, international laws. Everybody, every, listen to me, listen to me, listen, listen to me. First of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, you, you want okay, to, Hamid, then you go Hamid, to kill Hamid, the, the, I will not uh, give free. Why don't you go to and no, uh, uh, no, talk no, about no, what's tell happening you, in uh, Palestine I, and the way, uh, you know, Israeli... Will you stop? I mean, I'm responding to you, man. You're being very rude tonight, Hamid. What's wrong with you? No, I'm then I'll have to treat you, you like I treat I'm other Pakistanis always. But I'll, I'm trying to be polite. I'm explaining you. Let, listen to me. Listen to me, Pramit. First of all, first of all, you are on a big network. 
You know, 430 million people watch the Republic Media Network compared to a small, tiny media group like Guardian. So we are too big to be depending on the Guardian. First point, we are a big media Guardian group. Guardian has more Republic credibility than you. Okay? Don't compare us to small channel. outfits like Guardian. Chalo, hai na, aapka hai. Chalo, anyway. Okay, now my second point is, my point is that General Bakshi, they should be happy that these people have died. I don't want anyone to die. I mean, I am I'm against the idea of killing anyone. But Shahid Latif was the key aide of the jaish e Mohammed chief Masood Azhar and the mastermind of the 2016 attack on the Pathan Court Air Base. What do you want to do? Give him Nishane Pakistan? These, these people have died? No. Do you? You should be thanking us, you? General Bakshi. I mean, I don't understand. Who are these people? No, no. Who, who are, what? General Bakshi, please. General Bakshi. Thank you, sir. You know, you know, Arnab, every single terrorist less is less of a bojh on this poor earth. The Pakistanis have had it up to their gills. They started creating these terrorist organizations. Hillary Clinton years back advised them that if you, you know, keep snakes in your backyard, feed them milk every day in the fond hope <coughs> that they'll only kill uh, and bite your neighbors, then one fine day you will pay a heavy cost. They are paying it today. And uh, you know, if the terrorists are being killed, I thought they should celebrate. Because they are not able to handle them. But the fact of the matter is, Arnab, the way we kill terrorists is like what we did, is like what we did post Udi with the special forces strike in which we killed 40 of oh, them yeah. in their own launch pads. The way Who's we hit Balakot, with that's, our that's mirages we and we killed 200, 200. That is what um, our defense minister and our prime minister meant when they said, Ghar mein ghuske maarenge. Now there is the Mossad, there is the KGB, there is the FSB who have been killing terrorists in all other countries, you know, and uh, without a increase on their uh, route. But the fact of the matter is, whether, 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 whether India is doing it or not, show us the proof. This young lady <laughs> from the Guardian, you know, she was their art and culture correspondent, Arnab. She was their art and culture correspondent and she has suddenly graduated to terrorism. Uh, she has gone to Shaker. Pakistan, been wined and Shaker. dined by the ISI and, and given a tutorial, given a tutorial on what is happening. I am saying give us the proof, show us the proof. Yes. Whether Canada so, or here or the one hand, show us the proof. Point is, General Bakshi, point, point, General Bakshi, on the one hand, you are admitting point, that you killed point, it by the name of terrorism. On the other hand, you are asking for the proof. Please make up your mind whether you killed it or not. Then we will talk about yes. the proof. Yeah, then, I made up my mind. Talk about the, you haven't even heard what I said. No, you I know, heard you, Jalazar. Know, this is, please, this is what happens when you don't hear what the other side has done. No, Jalazar, I, I heard you very well. well. That the way we kill terrorists... Maybe you got me wrong. I am saying the way we kill terrorists across the border is what we did post Uri. We sent in our special forces in your territory, three to four kilometers deep, hit then your you large pads, killed 40 terrorists please. there. When that Lord was not team, enough please. of a message. Let me finish. You are not the okay. only person okay. on yeah, this I, I, I have a, I have a, I have a solution finish. to this. And, okay. I, and I am telling okay. you... Oh, wow, wow, wow. Ji, ji. Ji, Jana, sir. Uh, Arna, what I was saying was that the way we kill is the way we kill 200 odd Pakistani terrorists in Bala Court. That is the way we do it. Just in case you weren't very clear as yet. Yeah, the point is, the point is, the point is, Sushant, that you are Sushant, okay. Sushant, let, Sushant, let me, Bala let me tell you, uh, Hamid, Hamid, thank you, let me get in, let me get in, Faraz and uh, Barrister Amrit Ahmed Sheikh also. Second, Arnab, see, see, give no, I won't give you, yeah, there are other, three other panelists, aise nahi karte, Hamid ji, Hamid ji, aise nahi karte, mein kuch bol raho, three panelists ne abhi ta kuch kaha nahi hai, kya aap baat kare? Nain, aapko nahi dunga, nain, nain, I, I, I must come in, typically, you know, no, 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 one minute, sir, one minute, the point is, the point is, First of all, Faraz and Barrister Amrit, Sushant will tell you the same thing. If you feel that we are killing Pakistani terrorists and we are very bad people, we are killing Pakistani terrorists, then the right thing to do 
is to send a letter to the Indian Embassy, put in a complaint, put it through the right diplomatic channels. We will put it through the right diplomatic channels, put the appropriate investigators, take adequate time, do an investigation and give you an appropriate reply. What is this calling someone from Guardian and saying Indians that in Pakistani terrorists ko mara? It makes no impact to us for us. But it's, you know, I, it makes no impact. I think you're doing it the wrong way. If you no, Anna, yes, for us. Case the case the case in point here is that the Guardian's report has substantiated the very claim of the Pakistani government, the current government and the previous government that the Indian that the India is sponsoring terror on. Uh, uh, foreign grounds, be it US, be it Canada, know, and you know, the claims nothing. that the US and Canada were making was substantiated through the reports. Now, moving on, now on one end, you claim that, oh, we've killed uh, terrorists in Pakistan and there has to be the right kind of recourse uh, to, uh, you know, uh, contact or communicate with the, uh, with the Delhi government. Yes. The point here is, first, you yes, admit yes, that you yes. have been sponsoring state-led terrorism on the foreign soil. Only then the governments will talk to the Indian government. Only then the US government and the Canadian government will deal with the New Delhi. Because first, you have to admit, and that you are admitting on the national channel where apparently why 413 we... million people no, why should, why watch should, on why should... Okay, one minute. Faraz, there is a Faraz, admission. Faraz. Faraz, Faraz, uh, I, Faraz, Faraz, I, Faraz, people are watching this program. It is one of the highest, it is the highest watch program in the country. I'm I aware that. of it. I am. It, it matters. I, my simple answer is Sushant, Sushant is a very influential commentator as a general Bakshi. All I will say is, what if we don't admit? I'm sorry to sound brazen about it. What will you do? What can you do? Second point is, we are a very busy country. You see, we are busy going to the moon hosting the G20, we are going to have the third largest economy I in the world, right? We are busy country. working on uh, technology. In the uh, 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 we, we don't have time to, we don't have, yeah. why should we try to kill your Misleading terrorists? your own You nation. kill your own terrorists. That's Sushant, is, Sushant will appropriately... Arnav, that's called you diversification. You spend on economy so, and then you also spend on terrorists. No, no, also. Sushant. No, no, we don't that's want to die. We don't. And I acknowledge no, no, that no, uh, no, 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 Sushant is I getting, Sushant has that, Sushant, Sushant, Sushant is responding, Sushant, Sushant, what do you think so should be I, done now? You know, Arnab, I am a How little do we bemused, I, I am a little bemused by the fact that Pakistan needs substantiation and authentication from Guardian for uh, certain dossiers which they have prepared. Can you understand the magnitude of what Faraz is saying? That they have produced certain no. uh, certain dossiers, and he says the Guardian has substantiated it. I don't see how no, a newspaper can substantiate something which a government has produced. Number one. Number two, if they have actually got prosecutable evidence, then why isn't it in the public domain? What is the prosecutable evidence they have got? Have they got any videos since they claim to have safe city projects all over the place? They seem to have cameras and, and CCTV and everything all over the place. Uh, surely they would have captured something. We haven't seen anything in the public domain at least. Uh, there are forced confessions from people. How many of them have been actually prosecuted and uh, brought before the courts? Uh, and are those court proceedings open? Absolutely not. Uh, the other gentleman who says that the Canadians have pro produced proof. Can you please show us what is the evidence that the Canadians have proof, uh, provided? Not a shred of evidence has been provided by the Canadians so far. Not even a shred of evidence. All they, had, they have uh, leveled is credible allegations. Whatever credible allegations means. I don't know. It can either be credible or it can be allegation. It can't be credible allegation. It's an oxymoron of sorts. So, so I can't yeah. understand where that is coming from. The next if point you, is... The question, please, you've had your say, let other people speak. The next question, which I have for the Pakistani uh, gentleman is, you know, uh, okay, fine, let us for a moment assume that India has been going inside Pakistan and bumping these guys off. Who were these guys? Were they pillars of Pakistani society? Is Jaisha Muhammad a pillar of your society? Is Lashkar-e a pillar of your society? Uh, you know, awesome. these are, awesome. is, a, is, a, is a hijacker of the eight, uh, IC 814 uh, flight 
a pillar of your society so why Can what I were reply? these guys doing in pakistan Superb. what was a hijacker of an indian airlines yeah. plane doing in karachi please let us know why was uh, uh, ideally a hijacker of a plane yeah. should have been prosecuted inside pakistan and put in prison and the key thrown away what was he doing doing no normal business in pakistan have you studied your own track record of terrorism you know you are pointing fingers at other people yeah yeah well said have you seen your own track Ishan, record uh, how much Ishan you have been involved Ji. in terrorism in the world over now. so if okay and let us for a moment assume it, it, uh, that the guardian has published something number one it has only regurgitated old information which has already been there in the public domain a number of people have already published this information so there's no new earth shattering path breaking investigation which these guys have done none whatsoever nothing absolutely zinch so what is the new thing which everybody is getting their nickels in a twist about nothing uh, and 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 for a moment let us assume that whatever they are saying is true do they realize that they might have done it for ideological and political purposes but do they realize that this is actually going to boomerang on them because if they are trying to target the current government in india uh, by saying that look this is a government which goes and carries out these kind of operations around the world frankly speaking they are just adding a couple of 100 million more votes to the vote bank of this government rather than actually undermining this government they are only adding to the reputation of this government as one which is not going to you know turn the other cheek uh, kind which many of the previous governments were doing that this government is not going to do this it's going to give a blow for a blow so frankly speaking if i was in the bjp for example i would have certainly sent a thank you card to guardian and said can you please publish some more reports like this because it does a hell of a lot for my brand equity no, than anything yeah. else will do shan they say something now Some, we do not get that kind of time to explain our, our part of the story so exactly. kudos to sushant and kudos to you to give him uh, unequivocal air time to explain his case yeah can i say something now anna if you no, give me 2 minutes as well i tell you faraz 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 save the sarcasm i i i am responding to faraz see faraz i'll tell you one thing when you are when you are headlining a big story and coming to a big conclusion you cannot write a fairy tale it is incumbent upon the journalist to at least name one specific source under the cover of journalistic anonymity you cannot say i have sources but i will not name them i could be speaking to you faraz and calling you a pakistani intelligence official in this specific report this three byline report not one individual official has been named except towards the very end as background information a person who who is part of some think tank is referred to but as far as any of the headline grabbing parts of the story not one official has been named this is scurrilous in terms of but journalism but can i so i'm not now? i'm not trying to take away time from you you understand no, no. but there has no, no i'd like faraz kind of... to reply because he we made that observation i'm hitting him back here yeah, yeah. I don't. You're yes, absolutely Faraz. right. There has yes, to be right. substantiated sources to confirm, and there has to be trichotomy of sources to confirm one single report. But the point is, there are editorial checks, and it's not uh, upon one reporter to report, file a report, and it's published. Uh, How do you the, know? The, 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 No 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 one minute one minute no 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 suppose 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 i put out a report today that pakistani intelligence officials have told me that parvez musharraf paid 10 crore rupees to kill benazir bhutto but are not suppose i put out that report many people suspect musharraf said no no one minute one minute hey one minute suppose i say that reliable pakistani intelligence officials have told me that musharraf killed benazir bhutto and paid 10 crore rupees but i don't name a single person will you accept Anna, my will report editor, will your editor approve will you that report it? will your editor approve that report if it no, not no, first, no no first of all it, first of all it won't be carried on republic but I'm saying first if anybody all, puts out a story like that, you'll say without naming the person, you are running a fake no. piece. It's fake news. 
I mean, uh, I have seen you. So don't time don't take a convenient argument for us. Same, uh, you have been quoting the same Guardian, the same Guardian again and again to prove your point in the past. Why are you not? Never in my life. Again? I'll tell you. Yeah, are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? Quoting the Guardian is like quoting the Sun as a source of journalism. What okay, are you talking you about? Now my you question, don't, you I don't, have never done you that. Don't agree with the I have Prime never Minister. done that. You don't agree with the. I have you never don't done agree that. With the American prosecutors, you don't agree with the Qataris who 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 have held your three uh, navy officers, and now they've of course uh, been withdrawn. You don't agree with the Pakistani government. Nobody is held. They've uh, they've all been freed. One phone call from Delhi freed. Nobody is yeah, held. They were on India is a powerful through. country. They were on we told the Qataris they released them. That was diplomacy at its peak. But they were on the death row. Yeah, but one phone reason. call is enough. No, we are a big country. But they were on the death row. Yeah, yeah, but, but we are a big country. No, yeah, so Qatar was on the big country. They won't mess with us. So you can do all the badmashi you want. So you can do all the uh, you know terrorism. Badmashi, we are not doing. General Bakshi, General Bakshi, please. No, you know, I, the, the, please don't reduce. Your whole position is based I, on all the admissions. That the India has adopted uh, uh, foreign countries, uh, you know, terrorism as a state policy. That is what at what admission from Sushant. That is what you are admitting. Oh, sir, On top we, of it, by yeah. denying the fact of uh, oh, report Sushant by the Sushant. On the other hand, Arnav. doing a complete program, it means that it has some substantial uh, credibility. That's why you are doing this program. That you know that people will give a weightage to the report of the Guardian. That's why you are doing this program against Guardian because you know that people will understand the credibility of Guardian more than Republic. Okay, uh, let me ask uh, one. General uh, Bakshi and Sushant, one one question to that, one question to Barrister Amrit because not spoken. Then I'll come government. back to you. Absolutely wrong. You must. I am curious. I am. I am a. I am no, a. I am a. I am a curious kind of person. So I am by nature a curious person. I like to ask these curious questions. And my curious question is to Barrister Amrit. Ahmed Sheikh Barrister Amrit Ahmed Sheikh, these people, who are they that you are weeping buckets for them? Hanzla Andnan, mastermind of the attack on the BSF convoy in Kashmir, in Jammu and Kashmir in 2015, he is dead. Riaz Ahmed, affiliated to LET, one of the main conspirators behind the Dhangri terror attack in Jammu and Kashmir, he is dead. Bashir Ahmed Peer. Alai Simtiaz Alam, Hizbul Mujahideen terrorist dead. Now, if all the people who are trying to do terrorism in India have are dead, maybe it's their bad karma. It's it's not like we are killing them. They try to do bad things to India, and they're all dead. They try to do terrorism in India, they're all dead. And so, seeing the <coughs> fact that they are dead, nobody in Pakistan will want to be dead. And therefore, will not carry out acts of terrorism against India, or feel they are going to be safe in Pakistan. You can come back to Pakistan, but you'll still be dead. Now, that doesn't mean we are killing them. There's no link there, Barrister. Sir, thank you so much for having me on your show, and I think that this is one of the four most and crucial topics that uh, we need to address at hand. Firstly, I would like to say one thing that uh, you just quoted this thing that if you have an issue with these deaths and if you have issues with the way these activities has been carried out, then you're supposed to write a letter to the Delhi Embassy and then you're supposed to make this report system and then go according to the law. As you recently just you yes. said this thing, so yes. I'll just say the similar thing in this situation as well. That okay, हम भी मान लेते हैं that we also agree with this thing that these activities were carried out. These things had been done.